You want to uh, kick us off? Kick us in? Kick no, us I, out? I, I want to kick somebody. All right, kick away. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. I know that, Mr. Man. They also call them cereals. I'm not stupid, you know. The story is ludicrous. You can imagine where it goes from here. Fixes the cable. Sometimes uh, I just get tired of thinking of all the things that I don't want to do, all the things that I don't want to be. <laughs> You're the damnedest barfly I've ever seen. I could look at a woman's legs for hours. I got nothing but time. We don't have to be barflies right down to the grave. Mickey Rourke. I don't ever want to fall in love. Faye Dunaway. Don't worry. Nobody's ever loved me yet. Barfly. It is Black Dog Video. It is After Dark. That makes this the Black Dog Video After Dark podcast, where we discuss uh, movies of the past and see if they hold up. Right here in Vancouver's, well, one of Vancouver's last standing video stores. My name is Dylan Reimer. I am a comedian and part-time, full-time, casual-time employee, (laughs) full-time hanger-outer at Black Dog Video. And sitting to my right, as always, is... I'm Alex Chisholm. I also work at Black Dog Video, and I'm a programmer at the Rio Theater down the street. Rio Theater, 1660 East Broadway. And on your on your FM dial. And who is the third person? Uh, I am Darren Gay. I own this uh, sweaty, grimy establishment in the, the bowels of East Vancouver. It's a little sweaty and grimy. It's fucking hot. I this do province, not like this weather. You, you've probably heard about it on the news. If anyone's listening, in fact, most of our listeners probably live right here, so you know about the all three intense of them all summer heat wave that's been going on uh, yeah. all summer long. Um, but we're not here to talk about. We're not here to talk about the weather. That's got to be a song. We talk right? about the government. It's we're, Pop yes, Song eighty nine. Talk about, about motorcycles yeah. driving motorcycles. by. Did you, hear, did you hear that too? I heard that. <laughs> I thought that was just my mind. I'm pretty sure that's. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what that person wanted was for everyone to hear it that's and, what, and, that's and just go, "What a cool person!" I am so cool. <sighs> anyway, uh, the movie this week that we are talking about here at Black Dog Video on Commercial Drive in East Vancouver uh, is, is Weekend at Bernie's. Is two. Two, yes. No, no. It's so, the sorry, Paul Anthony, if you're listening. We are not uh, doing Weekend at Bernie's. He's not two. listening, so and no anybody, need to apologize. And anybody who's listening to the podcast, uh, unless, unless you randomly selected it, you, you've read the write-up. You know what it is. It is the, uh, I guess, how would you describe it? The a classic? Cult classic? It's a cult classic. Barfly. Yeah. Uh, from what year is it? I actually don't have my notes. 87, I believe. 1987. 87, directed by, is it Barbet Schroeder? Barbet Schroeder. Or, Bar- or, Bar- or Barbet Schroeder. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's a French dude. Um, I always say Barbet, but I'm probably wrong. Barbet. Like Dorif. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Barbet yeah. Dorif. Schroeder. Schroeder. Yeah. But or, or like, like Barbet ba- Schroeder. It's directed or, or, by the kid who played piano in Peanuts. That's right. Or, 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 or Babar, that, that elephant, that boring elephant from is when you were Babar a child. Is it Babar or Babar or Babar? Babar. And this film is Barbet. absolutely without question a major cult classic um, at Black Dog Video, in fact. It's probably, I think, the most stolen title. Well, that's why. The movie's out of print, and we have to charge a... A deposit. A deposit just to rent it. It's the only movie we do it with, and I... No, no, there's a couple others. Is there a couple others? But, yeah, it's a $50 deposit for Barfly because the film's out of print. It's really expensive to replace, and every copy we've had since I've worked here on DVD has been bought from another store that's sadly gone out of business. Mm-hmm. This latest copy is from the shop Limelight, rest oh. in peace. Oh. Is, is that from used, Limelight? Yeah, oh. it used to be West Broadway and Alma. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I went out there on a mission years ago from you to get a bunch of titles. And, and I sent Barfly you on a mission. Sent me on a mission. We yes. went out there to... Because they Take were going no out prisoners. Of but Barfly was high on that list, and I managed to scoop it up. That was amazing. It's such an in-demand movie. Yeah, I think a lot of it's because, of course, it's written by Bukowski. It's basically about Bukowski. It's his, it's, it's, his got, o- it's his only screenplay. Yeah, it's got that cult, and also Mickey Rourke has had such a comeback the last couple of years that he has. Yeah, yes, and it, well, since the wrestler and stuff, there's a lot of uh, inter- renewed interest in his career. Sure, right? I well, don't know. Before he's we... somewhere between Nicolas Cage and Oblivion in terms of <laughs> the cult appeal. Right. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, well, he's in between Nicolas Cage and Eric Roberts, somewhere on the spe- like. Yeah, Eric- I think that's I think that's probably a good analogy because Eric, Eric Roberts is like he's like kind of bottom of the barrel, like straight to video movies now. Yeah, and, uh, Nicola- and the Dark Nicola- Knight, he was in that, but. 
and then and uh, Nicholas Cage is the whatever script floats by his his porch every morning or whatever. Or wait, or, he has or to, like a, an owl brings him a, a <laughs> yeah. script. Well, definitely the like, most prolific of the three. Well, he he's got he has to pay for all those castles and and like uh, and dinosaur skulls. skeletons he's yeah, bought. Yeah, castles made of dinosaurs. Yeah, skulls, exactly. You know. So, but, yeah. but but before we get uh, uh, too carried away here, let's. Uh, I don't. I'm not. It was it was your pick actually, Alex, and it a was. fine pick it was. So uh, let's talk about our first experiences with the movie Barfly. Alex, when were you first made aware of this film, and and what did you think of it? Well, oddly enough, it fits into a category of film that I've mentioned a few times in previous podcasts. I don't know if it made the the final edits because I've never you know because well, you've actually never listened you, to the podcast. Well, yeah, that that's your own undoing. But in 1987, I was obsessively as a teenager watching professional wrestling. That was like the peak era of Hulkamania and all that. And the Saturday afternoon wrestling show I watched, which was on like CBS, the Superstars of Wrestling, it always showed trailers. Like it was a noontime Saturday wrestling show. Me and my friends always watched it, and they showed the coolest movie trailers. A lot of the movies really? I still haven't seen, but it's movies like I saw, I remember trailers there and nowhere else for whatever reason, like The Hitcher and stuff, all these movies from like 86, 87, 88, but mostly 87. All these interesting movies, like nine, I've never seen it, but I just love the title Nine Seven Six Evil. Oh, I, 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 sorry, no word of a lie, but I actually have that movie practically memorized. I've it's, seen it so many times. They also used it's to great. show like the trailer all the time for uh, yeah, like the Hitcher Nine Seven Six Evil. There was another one too, and I can't. It just came and went into my brain, but it, it'll pop up later in the pocket. I'm can't sure remember it will. It but Barfly, they used to show the trailer for Barfly too. I watched that show like eighty six, eighty seven, eighty eight, but I remember eighty seven especially. There are all these cool trailers, so I might be off a few months when the Barfly one actually aired. Yeah, but I'm assuming it's eighty seven. But I remember thinking, even though it wasn't like an action or horror movie, I just thought it looked so awesome, and I knew who Mickey Rourke and Faye Dunaway were, and it just looked like a really kind of cool slice of life drama or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, I knew nothing about Charles Bukowski or anything like that. And the, the, but yeah, that was my first experience. I didn't actually see it, though, until the early 90s. It was one of those moments where me and two friends were stumped in a Halifax video store. And <laughs> literally, I'm just looking and go, I've always wanted to see this. I saw the cover. So we rented it and we loved it. Still, none of us knew anything about Bukowski at the time. Right. It's probably about Including how to pronounce his name. <laughs> but we uh, he wasn't a ghost it was Bukowski <laughs> but we uh, loved it we the three of us loved it right away but we knew nothing about the writer or any anything like that and we just thought it was this wild dark comedy about a drunk we wow. I remember us being blown away by Mickey Rourke's performance like scenes like where he does the yeah, fire yeah, and yeah. stuff we were like yeah cheering him because it was such a and how, it, was so, so, it was so outrageous so you're what like in, what late teens early 20s well by that point yeah like 19 and still not taking so, things so like, too seriously perfect but, age for it yeah but we were just blown away and, and like i said we didn't know anything about charles bukowski huh. i'll get i learned about him through this movie i'll tell you a little bit more sure about sure great all right so well, you, you, I'll, you, I'll you stop you, hogging the mic i was gonna say you really took the long road home to tell us that story didn't you it, yeah, as, <laughs> as, as Super, Super Tramp, Tramp. your favorite uh, band. I, I like Super Tramp. Oh, I, oh, I yeah, Super yeah, Tramp. I was not referring to Super Tramp because I do not like Super Tramp. By the way, I had a I went down a bit of a Super Tramp rabbit hole the other day because they infamously canceled a show on July thirty first, nineteen seventy nine, in Halifax. Oh, on their breakfast in was, America. Was that near, was that near the video name? store? Was where, that your where birthday you or something? And I posted yeah. about it. I found an old article about it, and I posted it on Facebook the other day, and so many people replied. Small, wor- bl- you're bloody well right. Bloody well right. Yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Darren, yes. sir. So, what, so do you recollect the first time you became aware? I have, a, of this I, have movie? A, I have a vague recollection. I watched it when it came out on on video back in the late eighties. Um, didn't really know much about it, you know. Um, it looked in- looked interesting, and I really liked it. But I really sort of just filed that away as an interesting, fun, interesting, strange little drunk film. But I didn't really pay much attention to it, and I haven't watched it since two nights ago. But there is someone in your life who uh, who had a more uh, in depth relationship with uh, Charles well, Bukowski. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. But my, my, my wife has seen this movie many times, and she was excited to watch it with me again. She hasn't seen it in a long time. Um, she has one other movie that she's watched probably more times than this, and for whatever reason, that is Weekend at Bernie's. Uh, as, hey. me- as, as mentioned on that podcast we did, because for whatever reason, that was her Christmas go-to movie uh, growing up. 
Um, you just need a hybrid. So, Wait, like we can't so I'm detecting like this is your pairing at the end of the night already. Is this a spoiler of your oh, pairing? Oh fuck no. Barfly and weekend I w- at Bernie's. I wouldn't recommend a weekend at Bernie's at all. Weekend at Weekend at Bukowski's. Weekend at Bukowski's. It makes perfect but, sense. But uh, but it was she was excited to watch it again because it was had, like a party movie for her and her friends growing up. I didn't have that like um because I, I didn't have any friends, um so I just watched the movie by myself, <laughs> and then you know. Just waited to talk about and, it. And when he starts, 40 years wait, later. When he starts shouting to all my friends, he felt so lonely. Yeah, told my friend. <laughs> to Darren Gay. <laughs> Wouldn't it yeah. be weird if that actually happened? That would be really weird. Uh, what about you, Dylan? What's your uh, recollection of this uh, fine film? This movie was very popular um, with my friends in the early 90s, I guess, when I graduated high school and started to party a lot. Um, it was basically <coughs> the epitome of cool and cult and everything you want when you're 18 years old. Yep. I first I remember seeing posters for it probably in maybe in Marquee magazine those magazines they give out in theaters but it seems like kind, it seems like kind of a cult would, it, it seems like it wouldn't be included in those I, I like would, Marquee I, 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 magazines I can't see that because they're all, they're all big Hollywood movies but or maybe it was the video no, store they but, would occasionally have like just a page ad I could see that because oh no no they for sure had a page because ad. it definitely played multiplex oh yeah like, but, I remember seeing the ad in the paper and stuff yeah I don't yeah think it, I don't think it played in big like it didn't make a lot of money well wherever it I didn't did, get that big of a release wherever I saw the poster uh, when I was twelve um, I thought it was someone's name. Named Barfly, I, I was like, I, I, I'd never heard the expression Barfly before. Well, well, I always imagine if Mad Magazine had made fun of it, they would have called it like Barf Guy, My Barf Guy, or yeah, bar, or Barfly, or something like that. Anyways, or Barfly. Um, yeah, any, a bar in any, Montreal. Any, anyway, called I, I'd never heard the expression Barfly when I was twelve when this came out, so I thought it was about some guy called Barfly, and I thought it looked like a really boring drama. Was that, would that have been his first or last name? Uh, Barfly. Barfly Higgins. I, gonna, or? <laughs> I know I'm going to say like uh, Ebenezer Barfly. Yeah. Or something or Eb. Uh, whatever P- no. point being it wasn't i ignored it until i was about 18 or 19 when my friend ethan and uh, and his sister f- were just obsessed with it and uh, were constantly quoting it and they kept saying things like you know, to all my friends or get trotting boy my, my friends are thirsty or whatever whenever we went out to the pub and there's um, a lot of great lines in this movie and then one night you know like we're baked and it's like it's time to watch barfly and uh I loved it. The first time I saw it, I thought it was I, I was I was kind of blown away. And it, it started um, the the usual young man or like young wannabe artists uh, love of all things Charles Bukowski and I, all I, things I, alcohol. I, I watched this movie on like like constantly. This was just out like your wife. It was just this this go to. We're, we're home from the bar. Oh, let's put on Barfly and 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 quote it incessantly. So I probably saw it a couple of dozen times. And I totally forgot about it for for a good twenty years until Alex picked it, and uh, I'm really glad you did, because spoiler alert, I still love it. I was really worried that it was not going to hold up. Yeah, um, well, cause usually because the movies Alex picks are, you know, they're not. Well, no, they're, okay, they're not, they're not our favorite I, movies. I, I, I'm not going to. I'm hold, kidding. I'm not going to hold kidding. Weekend at Bernie's against Alex, but you know, the, 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 <laughs> yeah, Scar- sure. the Scarlet Witch was really great, and, uh, Scarlet, and Scarlet Witch, Scarlet Empress. Oh, sorry, the Scarlet Empress, which we actually, we, we not actually the never Marvel made it. Character. We actually never, never made it to air. Starring who? I want to, I want to hear who. I can't remember, but uh, but, but Marlena I'll, Dietrich, but, but a little uh, icon named yeah, or Marlene Dietrich. How dare I pick these? Yeah, she died. Iconic classic films that don't hold up. I'm not. The only one I'm saying I didn't like of yours was Weekend The Squeeze with Michael Keaton. How about that masterpiece? You're acting like I'm attacking you. I'm complimenting do, you, piece do we of do shit. This, he was going on earlier how much he likes the squeeze. Never even heard of it. Anyway, we're not talking about that. What all I was saying is Alex generally picks the only one of yours I didn't like was Weekend at Bernie's. What about Dick Tracy? That was my pick. I oh, that movie sucked. That. Yeah, I hated it. Anyway, my point is this. I, I forgot my fucking point. Darren, what do you? Where do you get off making us watch toys? You know, come on. That was that oh, was toys. your pick. Yeah, yeah, I hated friend. toys too. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I, oh my god! I, I forgot what my point was. I'm not the one who accused Alex of making bad picks. That was Darren, and a, a, a brouhaha is Prove gonna, it. going to break out. Prove it. You know, you, it's like watching Charles Buk- uh, Charles Bukowski and, and Eddie the bartender <laughs> ready, to, ready to drag each other out to the alley and beat the shit out of each other. Which is how this movie starts, coincidentally, and ends. And ends. So it's it's kind of it like opens a, with an amazing tracking shot set the Booker T and the MGs. Going into the bar and then out the back bah, door, bah, yeah, past bah. the bar, out the back door, and, and the bar and, you, and, and, and this and horrific brawl between and, 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 Charles and it wasn't even that, it wasn't even that horrific. Henry and Eddie, and the bartender is alone in the bar and he's just like shrugs and he's, yeah. he, he just opens the paper or whatever. Anyway, yeah. 
Well, that's what he does at the end. Yeah, I know. That's what it's, perfect I, I, it's, symmetry it's, of this movie. Spoiler not, alert! Are, is anyone? I'm not familiar with any any of the films of Barbe Schroeder. He's made some great films. Uh, uh, one of my favorites is uh, Reversal of Fortune. That's oh, an amazing. With, with Jeremy film. Irons. Yeah. I haven't actually yeah. seen it. Oh, Wonderful it, movie. It is. A great he also film. did a really interesting, really disturbing one about 2000 ish or so called Our Lady of the Assassins. Oh, I haven't seen that one. It's good, but it's disturbing. Did, so. did he do um, uh, Matrice? Did you ever see that one with um, Gerald Depardieu? It's yes, a, it's it's a it's a again a you know what? Kind of I haven't seen thing. that one though. It's really so. good. It's really good. Yeah, I'll, the only thing I remember that movie is some guy gets his uh, dick nailed to a plank. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that also <laughs> happens in uh, what's it called? Sick, the life the and Bob death Flanagan of uh, Bob Flanagan, right. the super masochist, yeah. the Kirby Serpent Dick film. The Kirby Dick film. Serpent movies. in the Rainbow guy gets his dick nailed to a plank. That's correct. Is it, is this like a like a thing? Uh, like, although Antichrist as well. How big is probably? Yeah, yeah. Tell me you know this like incidentally. You didn't you didn't look things I'm up because dicks, of dicks based I'm on planks. Well, have you, he has a Rolodex at home. I, I, that's I, I, one of the categories. Well, have you seen <laughs> I, I, have you seen uh, Greg's collage? He has I, on his bedroom. Wall. I saw when he was on Jeopardy and the and the and, and <laughs> the, the category was dicks nailed to planks. <laughs> yeah. Have you he, cinema? He, he, he his ran collage. that collage. He ran it. <laughs> have you seen Greg's dick? It's nailed to a plank. Really? I've seen that's it. True? Yeah. Oh. That's why he wears those baggy jeans. Where did you see that? That's why this is radio. <laughs> Are we talking about um like did pirates walk across your dick? What, or like, no, like a piece of a piece of wood. Like a, pl- a plank. Like, 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 you you but, might you might cook like a piece of salmon on. Well, I was thinking pirate victims have to walk it and jump off it into the so, water. Walk someone's dick. Anyway. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Like when you say plank, how big? Six feet. Well, it depends how big the dick is. I, well, that goes without saying. Mm. If the plank is smaller than your dick, what's the point? Well, it, there, you, there, then, there you, is then a point. you're just propping it up. You're making it look bigger. Yeah, no one doesn't nail through it. Maybe, maybe Viking not. charcuterie. That's all I'm gonna <laughs> say. Viking charcuterie. <laughs> Great name for a band. Actually, no, it's a terrible name uh, for a band. It is Greg's band. Oh, I didn't know. He that. didn't Sorry, just Greg. make that up. Oh. Anyway, so uh, let's, uh, let's so, so I, yeah, I've, I've never seen any of the uh, films of Barbara Schroeder except Barfly, which I can I can pretty much. Quote well, he from he did he did a few older films like with Pink Floyd back in the '60s too. More. Oh, more. And yeah, Obscure yeah, by yeah. Clouds. I, yeah. I saw more. I saw more. Um. Anyway, it's it's interesting that they take. Well, first of all, it's interesting that you let Charles Bukowski write his own bio, uh, well, biography. Well, I, I th- well, it's, not, it's 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 sort of it's sort of semi autobiographical. But, but, but let's let's be clear before we say anything else. <laughs> A lot of this is complete horse shit. Well, of it, course, like like this is definitely because uh, he claims to be twenty four. I think well, in, 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 the in, in the movie. Yeah, yeah, it's like well, I, 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 sold, I sold some of my stories. And it was twenty four, <laughs> and it's right. like okay, you're clearly Mickey, like Mickey forty Rourke two. He, Mickey Rourke, he's he's never looked young, yeah. but he does not look twenty four. Um, by the way, this is one thing that impressed me and my friends. Aside from just finding it wildly funny and outrageous stuff at the time, Mickey Rourke. This was before he got his face all smashed up through boxing and stuff, and he was such a pretty boy in the 80s. We were blown away by how unrecognizable he yeah. was. Well, he, cause it's he, a great he, well, performance. Well, he, he, he sort of extends his bottom jaw right. out a little bit and talks like this. But yeah, he was, I, he was amazing. His lan- he develops a completely convincing like, but you, drunken... Do you know, do you know he was actually a boxer before he became an actor. I, I was, wasn't aware I, of that. I, I, was, I, I was doing the damage to his yeah, face. Well, I was doing a little evident. research on Mickey Rourke today because I, he's one of those guys, he's an interesting guy. Yeah. I always kind of wonder what happened to him along the way. Um, but when he started, he was like a boxer when he it was like, he had a horrible like upbringing, became a boxer to kind of rebel against his family kind of thing. And he boxed for like eight or nine years. And then uh, he ended up um, doing a play for a friend and then really enjoyed acting. So they became an actor and then did that for a long time and then became a boxer again. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's when he got his face mashed. And, well, and yeah. also, also apparently the, the producers were like, don't do that. And he told them all to go fuck themselves. Yeah. Like, like it's not just his face that kept him out of. Like, apparently he was, he was a rebel. He was a no, rebel, a rebel in Hollywood. Of course, but all um, I'm saying is, well, he he's was he so was... unrecognizable at this time. Like nowadays, this is the kind of role I could see him playing nowadays, no problem, because he's so unusual looking when his face is all smashed up, yeah. whatever. But back then, he was very much a pretty boy, and this is an incredibly transformative. Like in terms of totally becoming a character that's unrecognizable. Well, even it's his, not like he's under heavy makeup. Well, no, or no. Even his like the way he walks, when yes. he sort of puts his his uh, upper torso up front yeah. and walks with like uh, his arms behind him, it just so just incorporating all that yeah. sort of um, like a drunk 
kind of you know just been beaten yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Y- you know what it reminded me of actually uh, his his posture and and his demeanor and the way he walked. Did you, either of you, you guys must must have seen? Oh, um, uh, wedding singer. Wait, no, I can't believe I forgot this. Gandhi, Squeeze Steve Carell wrestling movie. The wrestler. No, Steve. Foxcatcher. Foxcatcher. Oh, I never seen um, Foxcatcher. I'm totally blanking on everything because I have a microphone in my Steve, face. Steve Carell. No, but no, um, uh, uh, he plays the Incredible Hulk in the Marvel movies. Uh, Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. Mark, Ruffalo. Yeah. Right. Mark Ruffalo's uh, like stature and the way he moves in um, Foxcatcher. In Foxcatcher is is you know he studied actual wrestlers and he had a certain gait which is was just it really reminded me of of. Um, uh, what Mickey Rourke brought to the to right. the role of of, uh, of Henry Henry, Henry Chinaski, yeah. technically, um, and, and I wonder if <laughs> uh, I want I wonder if 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 Bukowski actually moves like that, or if or if that was just an affectation on on Mickey Rourke's part. I don't know. But, but again, it's it's c- coming back to this thing where like part of the charm of, the, of this movie is that uh, I can imagine a lot of these stories in these shitty bars. Being true, yeah. Because, because when I, because when I was in high school, you know, when you're underage in East Vancouver, you go to, back in the day, you would go to places like the Ivanhoe and the Old American in the downtown East Side, where they would never card you, and you would see some really, really fucked up shit, right? Yeah, of course. But then, but then whenever I saw bars on TV or in the movies, it was always like sophisticated people, cool people in, in like designer suits, you know, you know what I mean? It was like especially in the '80s stuff, like uh, your favorite movie, Alex Saint Almost Fire. You know, <laughs> and this is like the alternative to that, where it's like, no, it's people drinking cheap draft and fighting each other in the alley, and hookers mm. talking about swallowing paste. I was just going to mention that, that yeah, you know, that, that old hooker that uh, just uh, she's like, credited like, as Grandma Moses. That's who like, Grandma Moses is. Okay, like this movie was really reflective. That's of, really gross. Of of um like a side of society that I'd never never seen represented. And what now, I really as, love. As, as sorry, just quickly, as for Mickey Rourke's posture and demeanor, um. I, like anyway, I, I I wonder if he was he was kind of kind of leaning into uh, uh, he's uh, maybe trying to ground it more or make it more realistic by by, by adding this 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 weird limp, like like I, well, anyway I, I I'm I, I'm definitely digressing on this but, but but what I really loved about it too is just talking about these unglamorous bars like I high points in this movie to the locations by mm. the way the cinematographer is Robbie Mueller he's totally incredible. Um, I really love the locations of the old, like, beer halls. And you could tell these bars that at one point, maybe they weren't high class, but they had some class. They were never high class. Maybe, you, could, you, could, you could tell. Not high class. But well, I maybe just in, like, the 30s, you know? Nine, yeah, yeah, well, way back in the day with the hard, neon it, it's and the hard, It's hard to say. They, it, it's an area of town that's fallen on hard times. It's but they, 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 they all they all have the same kind of aesthetic. There's no windows. Yeah. Uh, they have those weird like uh, if you look at the bar like the actual bar in the bars. Yeah. They have these weird like uh, like sectional pads. You can lean here like leather cushion pads so you can lean lean against yes. them as right. you drink and stuff. Yeah. They're they're and they're all seedy and they're all gross. I'm yeah. sure I'm sure they just smell of cigarettes but, and of beer and carpet yeah. and hair but, and everything uh, that smells high terrible. class. But I mean. Um, some of them they would have been so much nicer back in the day. It's not just possibly that yeah. they've always been dyed. They, they're but they're I, they're dirty and dingy now. I got that feeling too. But yeah, like like, like um, they were they, they were lived in bars. Like, I love the old neon like, like, and stuff like, like a, that. Like like yeah. like a faded glory. A faded glory. Hell yeah. uh, you know, well, I, uh, of of a greatness that maybe was never actually. Maybe there. not it, greatness. It, it, it really. Just, you know. it re- back when I saw this, which probably would have been like ninety two. Um. Anybody listening to this in East Vancouver over a certain age will remember a bar on Hastings Street called uh, uh, Funky Winker Beans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, it's still there, and they do karaoke and stuff. And the, But before it was a punk bar, it was like a fade. It was it was like a dying music hall. Like, they had these huge red velvet curtains that had cigarette burns in them. And if those curtains could talk. Have you? Did you ever go well, there? The inside no, doors been, know, of Funky's Winker Beans. Are, have, like, leather padding and stuff. Yeah, like it, the inside the, the, of the yeah. doors and like brass. Well, that's kind the, of the, the, the whole I, place I, was I, like, but there was a fire about ten years, fifteen years ago, and yeah. and then they they gutted it. But but that there was is, a that's, shooting. Mass that's one of the la- that's one of the too. last remnants. But well, yeah, I, I think the padding's on those doors because you know when the bouncer throws you by your your belt yeah. and your collar, yeah, maybe. so you don't crack your head <laughs> open on the door. The just door it, pops open. Exactly. I, I, that, I had that happen to me once. Really? Wow. I, I got properly bounced from the canby. Should, should should we talk about our getting kicked out of bar story? Well, funky, funky <laughs> winker beans. Incidentally, though, had a mass shooting in there. A staff member made a reference to that years ago. 
when I was there for karaoke and I went home and Googled in, in 1980, it used to be called the Palace Hotel. A guy was Lofty. denied service and he came back and shot the place up. Some of the bullet holes, according to this staff member, are still in one wall. And if you look, it's there's it's a brick wall. There's fake brick like tile yeah, over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's covering up bullet holes. This guy shot up the staff and I think killed one member. Drove out to like Richmond and shot it out with a bunch of RCMP officers at their station. This really? Guy's, this guy's and, like a fucking and, Terminator. And the article I found out about him though was. Like, this happened in 1980, and the article was from about the two, mid-2000s, and he was being considered being let out for day parole. So oh. there you go. Who knows? I want, I want to hear, I, I hear Dylan's story about getting thrown out by his belt buckle on a, in the it, bar. I couldn't believe they actually did it. Well, I had it coming. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to have a fake... <laughs> I used to work with a guy named Victor Solarius, and he had... Uh, Sounds fishy. He had He was from Nova Scotia or something, and he had, like an expired ID of some description. And I was uh, 17, and he just gave it to me. He's a co-worker. He just gave me this expired... Thanks. It was like a student card or something, but it said that I was like 27 years old and like, you know, I clearly... 45 was, years old. And, and the guy had red hair, but like brown eyes and like everything about it. But Victor Solarius got me into a lot of uh, uh, pubs because when they didn't really care, as long as he had something, right. they, they were off the hook legally. Yeah. So we used to all go to the Camby... Um, and yeah, uh, you know, a bit of a loudmouth, obnoxious 18 year old. And this, is, and this is a, what? this is, this is two weeks away from my 19th birthday and I order a pint of beer. Um, and the, the bouncer comes over and he's like, you, I want to see your ID. And I show it to him. He goes like, that's fake. And I was like, uh, no, so? it's not. And uh, he's like, "You got to get out or whatever." And I was like, "Fine." And I but just twenty seven. And I just, I just ordered. But I didn't care because I was turning nineteen in, in a couple of weeks anyway. Anyway, so my best friend is like, "Oh, you know, I'll pay you for the pint that you just bought." And so he gave me, he gave me the money, and then I went to hand him the pint, and then this jerk bouncer just like grabbed the pint, and and and, and tried to take it away. And then I, and then I said to the to the bouncer. I paid for it. I'm giving it to him. <laughs> Give it back, you fat fucking slob. <laughs> Which is like, and it's like when you tell the bully to fuck off in the playground. Sounds yeah. reasonable. And I would never ordinarily say that, but the next thing I knew, I see, I see him coming around the, the table, and so I just grabbed the pint and just started pouring it down my throat as fast as I could <laughs> before the inevitable happened. And then he grabbed me by the collar, and he twisted my arm behind my back and then got me got the thumb in the belt oh. and he just like classic like, perp walked me through this crowded bar and and I, I couldn't Give stop I couldn't stop laughing and then he threw me through the side doors like not <laughs> like out on, the, out on the side like threw me through I think like I know with my, with which my side face. doors you mean yeah 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 yeah, yeah. over so, on yeah. the not the main entrance Doesn't but matter. just up anymore. by the hostel what what is that Seymour anyway so he like threw me through those doors and into the street yeah. and I almost got hit by a car and then being the cocky little prick that I was, uh -huh. I walk over to this was. to this the huge glass like window, uh -oh. you know, and everyone's looking. And then I just took a big bow, and then and then people applauded. Oh, I, I thought um, you were gonna throw like a garbage can through the window. No, I would never. I thought you'd be like Dustin Aubin in The Graduate, you know, Elaine, like you start rattling. No, I totally windows. deserved yeah. it. I just couldn't. I was just like, I can't believe I just got it properly bounced. And That's then I awesome. showed up. They showed up like a, a couple of weeks later with uh, with, with a valid real ID. ID card and flowers. And did, and you, did you like smack it in his face? Like pull it back and it was in like his face? it was like the how do you like them apples moment in uh, in Goodwill Hunting. Right. Like, Here's my ID. How do you like them apples, Carlos? You fat fucking slob. <laughs> Ordinarily, I would never bring a person's weight into it, but um. I, I just wanted to say something. Why didn't you tell hurtful. him about you, you, his want say, you want to say something hurtful? Or, why why I, didn't you or, tell him about the make the carpet cleaner joke? Your mother's, that Henry makes? Your mother's cunt smells like carpet cleaner. That, I, I, I've um, got that, that. That's a that's a great line. I'm not sure I'd actually seen Barfly by that point, but um, yeah. So that's my story. Have either of you been thrown out violently thrown out of bars? Um, I have. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. I, I was I was in a in a bar in Oshawa a long time ago. And I was drunk, and they had we we're, were sitting between some tables, and they had these really low hanging lights. And whenever you got up to go to the bathroom, you inevitably would bang into one of these lights. And the bouncers came over and warned us, "Don't bang, don't bang the lights, or you're out of here." And so somebody at our table inevitably banged the light, and the bouncer came over, "Cause you guys are out of here." And he grabbed my I was drinking out of a pitcher for some reason at that point, 
And um, he grabbed the pitcher from me, <laughs> and I wouldn't let it go. And it's back and forth, so he threw it in my face. Oh. There wasn't much left in the pitcher. And then I threw the rest back in his face. Big mistake. Yeah, yeah. Anytime you do that to... Yeah, yeah. so yeah. His, his buddy who was standing, I didn't even see him, just sucker punched me in the face and knocked punched? me. Punched? Oh, brutal. Yeah, he just, that, that's way I, better I, than mine. So I, had, right. I ended up going to the hospital, getting like eight stitches. Took the guy to court, actually. Wow. Yeah, I didn't win, but, uh, you know, still... It was it was a horror. It was a one of my one of my no one of my proudest moments. Yeah, right. But yeah, I, I remember being like being escorted out of the bar and the same thing, hand behind my my back, and yeah, I, I remember spitting blood in the guy's face and wow. saying, oh. "Fucking lawsuit, man, lawsuit." Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, How yeah. old were you? I was like nineteen. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. How about you, Alex? It was Nothing so stupid. That memorable. I got tossed at one time just for kind of mouthing off and being drunk and just kind of pushed out the door by a bouncer but nothing that memorable but i used to get walked out of bars this was a uh, notorious for me and my friends bouncers would constantly wake me up at the table like i'd drink and fall asleep and right. then they would just escort me out and i it's always you ordered oval team, you idiot. well it wasn't and it wasn't <laughs> just because of like drinking too much back then but i was later diagnosed i'm not gonna it, it was totally explained by my sleep apnea oh too i, I have extreme obstructive sleep apnea which has been taken care of by using a CPAP machine but throughout my 20s I was always plagued with like falling asleep at really inconvenient so times. are they paying you to mention a lot of it had the, to do the, with the, the CPAP so machine on the yeah. podcast but I'm not certainly not are they, are they a new sponsor I'm certainly not <laughs> I'm certainly not uh, yeah I didn't name the brand but I certainly uh I'm certainly not downplaying the fact that I was also hammered these times, but, but, but I did it enough where it, when I eventually was diagnosed with apnea, it's like every friend I told that to was like, "Hey, that's why you used to fall asleep at the bar." So, the so does, does that make you fall asleep, or does it just make you like, like have well, like horrible like sounds when you sleep, like well, snoring and stuff? What happens is it makes you like have that. horrible sounds and stuff while you sleep, but you don't get proper sleep because right, of it. You uh, never right. get fully. So when you're well, like, were you, so were you I'd were be out partying, the- and yeah, I, I would get hammered, but at the same time. Uh, I was falling asleep so often it makes sense looking back now that yeah. it was I mean like I was well, overtired as it was and then I would fall asleep. Why, why, why were you overtired? Like all, all that because work on the bridge watching people have sex in the no, cars because the I was choking in my <laughs> sleep due to sleep apnea. Right. What I'm wondering is uh, our, uh, is, has our, is our technician Mr. Greg have you ever been I, I'm assuming you've been forcibly removed from, from a pub at some well, point. Isn't that what happened tonight? Uh, <laughs> just once. Uh, slam dancing at Love Affair. Oh, <laughs> oh wow! Uh, yeah, but it, it was it was a slow slow dance, a bad, wasn't it? <laughs> a bad combination of uh, some illicit drugs and uh, well, drinking like PCP well, that, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. 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 heroin. And it was goth and growth night hormone. Well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it took three guys. I just well, you're you're, you're, you're a big you're a big fella. You and, are a big and you got that Viking plank. Did, did you nail any of their dicks to a plank? <laughs> yeah, come here. Come here, bouncer. I'll show you what's what. I was what. half the problem. I got a hammer and a nail and yeah. a plank. His yeah. dick <laughs> nailed to the plank out the door, too. That was, that to was this, the when I hear just bounces. one fix to this day, yeah, I tear things Just down. one? I love I love that it's 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 love affair. Of course it's love affair. Love your hair. Yeah, uh, that's one yeah. Ba- uh, bar. Like it was long gone by the time I moved to Vancouver. But I've heard so many great things. Yeah, you dodged a bar. bullet. The, pla- the place was a dump. Dump. It was a really fun place. Oh, to go people are always going on about great love affair. Was I always hated? It's, anyway, well, so all, let, let's get back to the movie. Right. It's been about twenty minutes <laughs> since <laughs> talking about us getting kicked out uh, well, of bars. It's <laughs> a apropos, I would say. It is. I think it's. I just want to establish our street cred when it comes to discussing a movie like Barfly. Yeah, we all we're all now. I every time I. I watch this movie I think the same thing this is a combination of because it was written by Bukowski it's a combination of fantasy and 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 realism you know because there's there's no way he says things like look at this place baby it's a cage with golden bars yeah like, I don't I don't believe of course that not, but, but he, he claims to but be 24 a, but yeah, he's obviously but in his 30s it's autobiographical I mean it's got autobiographical elements yeah but it's about a fictional character yeah well I, I know I, and that's what and, I love about it and, yeah, and that's why I, I actually consider it a comedy more more well, than it is it is very more, more than a drama but, you know yeah. But but thing is also the, the thing the thing is it's written by him so you want to hear those lines yeah because that what's that, that's what makes this movie I forgot that's what makes this movie so good is all those great fucking lines it's just filled with great lines every, every yeah like I I was I had notes and I was writing them down uh-huh. in fact like part burp <laughs> uh, Greg and I went and drank at a cheap shithole in Vancouver called the Princeton, and then I went home and I watched the watch Barfly just the right level of drunk and right. and after about. 15 minutes, I was so busy writing down great lines that I realized, 
we wouldn't even talk about the movie because I'd just be talking about all the great lines. Yeah. So to anybody listening, if, if you haven't seen the movie, just go watch it and listen to the great lines. Yeah. You well, probably have a few written down. I do. There. There, there's one that he says, I, I hate to be you if if I were me. I hate to be you if I were me. Yeah. Oh, God. Eddie's got some great lines. <laughs> yeah. It's just, and the, and it's, he asks, uh, or, uh, I think Faye Dunaway, Faye, Faye Dunaway asked him, do you hate people? No. He goes, No. But I feel better when they're not around. I feel better when they're not around. Yeah, which is great. And I want to add, by the way, Eddie, unquestionably Frank Stallone's finest cinematic moment. Absolutely. Why the why the fuck is Frank Stallone in this movie? What a, he's so he's good. He's perfect. In it, though. Yeah, he's because he's perfect. Yeah, he's got he's got he's got he's a good looking guy, but he's got scars. Yeah, he, and he's he's like he's one of them. He's like the down and out kind of. He's working in a shitty bar. Yeah, you know and. The, yeah, yeah, he's he's. It's but he has passing, enough but, but senses him, about him to like not be. Yeah, but completely he but, down. But he plays a media. Yeah, but he, he he's wrong. sleeping with anybody that comes of around. Of course. As well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. ever think that like maybe that line, like maybe he brought some of his je- jealousy of Sly's success. Yeah, which, which, which like maybe Sly said to him, "You can't work, you can't fuck, <laughs> and you can't fight." <laughs> and then Barbara Schroeder's like, "That's great." <laughs> Let's keep that, that. Th- that thing that Sly told you um, that one Thanksgiving in a rage. Yeah. Do you remember Stuttering John, the interviewer who used to work for Howard Stern? I do. I saw a clip of him once asking Stallone, Sylvester Stallone, if he was embarrassed to be seen in public with Frank. And Stallone <laughs> was like dying laughing. Really? Dying <laughs> laughing. Really well, did, didn't Frank Stallone like write and direct the sequel to Stay? To no, no he did Sylvester music, Stallone did, but right, Frank, Frank did Stallone the, did, did the, music on the soundtrack. Which we have to do for the podcast. Oh, I would love Stay to do that. Alive. Stay Alive. We yeah. have to do Stay Alive. That movie is. That might, that might be a hilarious. Good roof track one, maybe. Um, no, I thought Frank Stallone was perfect. You know, th- this is a movie inhabited by character actors, including Mickey Rourke. I would say is a character actor. Also, uh, one of the guys hanging in the bar, he has a mustache, and he kind of mumbles a lot to the side in different scenes. He's not totally down and up, but he's he's kind of one of the more normal looking right. barfly people. But he um, he he has a small part in Taxi Driver. He's one of the fellow Taxi Drivers. He's in a few scenes in, in that sure. classic. So who, I, I recognized him. It was did either of you? I could not. I don't know the actor. I could name, not though. figure out who played who the detective. The guy who played oh, the detective. Oh, it's Jack Nance Jack from Eraserhead. Yeah, I've and never twin, seen Eraserhead. And, and Twin Peaks. Maybe no, that's not it. I, I could yeah, not that, place that's who, it. That, that's who he was. Because I'm not a huge David Lynch guy, so uh, oh, but I've seen he, him in something else. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 he's oh yeah, he's, he's famous for being in. He's in, deceased uh, now. Yeah. He he was a prolific character actor. Um, oh, you, should, you should watch Eraserhead. It's awesome. But yeah, so basically, so yeah, the f- classic image of Eraserhead is Jack Nance. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. him. Oh, he's the guy with the hair. Yeah, he's yeah. got the gentle eyes. I, I had I, I, no I, I, idea. I know he's wearing you, you, a hat. You, you, in you this watched movie. Twin Peaks, though, right? Of course. Yeah, he's uh, he's like the uh, the lumberjack married to Catherine Martell. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's and, right. Yeah. Okay, that's that's that is probably it actually. I don't know. I'm not. We won't get into, into Lynch. I got a love. I got a love hate relationship with David Lynch. You know. Yeah. Fair um. Enough. But yeah. So so just this movie, it just had really interesting faces. You know, like like yeah. like, like, like the, the the old uh, the old sex trade workers. I don't know what you yeah. what you're supposed to call them anymore. Uh, um, Grandma Moses. I would say hooker, horse? but I think hooker is derogatory. <laughs> but but they're never um, really the the, face really wallet. the only characters like. Openly ridiculed and derided is Eddie because he's this posturing macho yeah. jock jerk, yeah. unoriginal macho but, but energy. And he's well, mean to his customers. He looks down on most of them if he's not totally well, taking advantage. Well, I, of I, I think that's why I like this movie more because, like, it's a movie about people that are, are down and out, but and they're just, they don't really have anything going on in their lives, but they're not ridiculed or looked at that way this is there's this is what they do and they're yeah just, their I, I don't i don't know if they're they, they seem to be happy in this life it's, but maybe because that's all they have you know one of my favorite moments in this movie uh it, it's like one of the f- three or four scenes that it, that always stays in my brain is when the old dude comes in and and then the nice bartender not eddie it, it, actually it's a different bar i think no it's, it's, i don't know i know what you're talking about and, the guy who does and, and, and he has to, and he has to he he spill, keeps he spills his whiskey he, on him because he has so a he shake takes so his much. scarf and he yeah. and, and he has to raise the, the drink I, I, up. I always thought i always thought that was charles bukowski it's not, no it's not because you said even when we were having wings before this podcast you said he's credited as old timer but yeah. that's the guy referred to as old time yeah but that, that's not bukowski i know it's not yeah, yeah. the guy who says bukowski cuz i always thought it was cause I, back when i first watched it, i didn't know what Charles Bukowski look like, yeah. so I because it, oh, that's got to be him because that's like that's like a cameo thing to do in a it, movie. It would I mean? seem like but it, yeah. He, uh, but no, he's in the scene where Mickey Rourke first meets Faye Dunaway. 
he's sitting at the bar and Mickey Rourke walks over to meet Faye Dunaway, the Wanda character, right. and Bukowski's sitting at the bar and Is he? Mickey okay. Rourke walks right. past him. But he also, I, I know for some reason, I always thought he, he looked more, not directly into the camera, but he, he I noticed did, 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 did give a it, wink? He, yeah. No, he turns yeah. his head a little bit away from the camera and looks in the direction of Faye Dunaway right. as Mickey well, who Rourke would, walks who, there. Who wouldn't? We showed <laughs> this movie many years ago at the Rio because... Charles Bukowski, his second, sorry, Charles Bukowski's final live appearance, poetry appearance. reading. Someone might call me, someone will write in if they hear this. No, it's his second last, whatever. But one of his very final, if not his final. No one's writing in. Sorry. <laughs> one of his final poetry readings outside of the United States <laughs> was in Vancouver in 1979. Hmm. It was at a place called the Viking Inn, and we have a DVD of it here. But anyways, um, it was only it was filmed by Rogers back in the day, like Rogers Cable or whatever. Ah. They videotaped it back in the day. And this gentleman, I can't believe I forgot his name. If you're listening to this, Dennis, I'm sorry, I forget your last name. Dennis Rodman. Certainly not Dennis Rodman. Leary Men- Menace. Anyway, <laughs> it's really embarrassing. I can't remember his name, but Dennis, really nice guy who's from Vancouver originally. He booked and, and and took care of that appearance by Charles Bukowski in 1979 and Rogers videotaped it. The tape was thought to be lost for years, but it was found again in every anniversary whenever he can. Dennis shows that it's like an hour and a half poetry reading down at this Viking Inn or an hour long or something. Right. He shows it. He showed it at the Ridge Theater when I used to work there, the Ridge Theater back in 2000. I love the Ridge. Good the Ridge, Ridge, now since demolished. I was yeah. a concession guy there. But right, a couple please. of years ago, I don't know where he did it elsewhere in the times in between, but about four or five years ago at the Rio, he contacted me. I'm a programmer there as I you know, flog every week in this podcast. I'm a programmer there. He contacted me, and we did an anniversary show in that October of this appearance by... Um, by Charles Bukowski. We showed it, and we showed it with Barfly. Is this the one? We did it as a double build to Rio, and it was a huge hit, but I remember when we showed it. Talk about taking the long way home. This is the big punchline of my diatribe. Better be good. Is that when I I watched Barfly, I'd seen it a bunch of times, but I watched it to prepare for that screening, and I remembered Bukowski's appearance, and when we showed it at the Rio, one of the things we told the audience to do, with no spoilers, but you'll see him in this moment. So the audience just lost their shit. When you see Bukowski on the screen in that moment, the sold out. We sold out the Rio. It was like yeah. 400 people there. And uh, it was it was like Bukowski mania that night. And they went nuts when Bukowski appeared. Because he was stage. a ghost. Because he was a ghost. Bukowski. He appeared on stage. Bukowski. Yeah, Bukowski. Boy, what and a he's, And he's, he's, trying to drink, he's trying to drink wine, but it's just falling through him. On our podcast, Dessert Before Breakfast, we review final episodes of TV shows with one catch. At least one of us hasn't watched any of the series before. Who built these robots? It's genuinely <laughs> difficult! Is it a metaphor? <laughs> what does it mean? Where was the creek? Yeah, I saw no creek. Did it ever show up? <gasps> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Dessert Before Breakfast. Available wherever you get your podcasts. I just... I don't know what's happening! <laughs> There used to be this really cool bar downtown on Granville Street, like on the Strip. And it was like it was like a, a door, and it just went way to the back. And it was really kind of seedy. It was kind of like the bars in this thing. I can't remember what it was called. Granville? Was, yeah, down on Granville Wasn't Street. Wasn't it the Sugar Refinery or no, something? That, no, that, that was the place that was upstairs. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Well, that went, was before I moved I there. I went there a few times. Yeah, I saw, well, some, I saw some great bands there. There used to be a bar as well on Granville. It's long gone now, and it was like a country bar. It was bar. called Eddie's or something like that. Uh, anyway, sorry. Yeah. Oh, the, but oh, the, I love dive bars as well, and yeah. and in my twenties especially, we would always seek out like living in Montreal, the seediest bars to go. Hang before out before at. you continue, you say country bar. You're talking about the one on Granville near uh, Davy. That place was great with the giant portrait of uh, of Dolly Parton. Well, I don't remember the giant portrait, but it definitely even said on the door or mural like, rather mural. It was what like, what giant thing do you remember? <laughs> <Dolly> <laughs> <Parton. Yeah. laughs> This town, hair. this town used to be maybe that's okay. So I, I I'm gonna assume we're the back. Grand Union Country Pub down on. Uh, that place is a nightmare now. Yeah. Oh my God! Don't ever go in there. I don't. Go, there. I, don't I don't go downtown anymore. I, I used to go there all the time. It's it's honestly it's like they, they practically have a mattress on the floor and uh, it's awesome. the worst. 
Well, we are refreshed from our refreshing yes. refreshment break. I had a, I had a quick shower. Uh, that's right. Uh, I, w- I went for a swim. Yep. Oh, and by the way, Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat. That was the other trailer they used to air on the wrestling show. Thank yeah, you. Uh, I told you earlier there was Simmons another movie. Ozzy Osbourne, yeah. Trick or Treat. But the thing I... Uh, no, this movie, I just want to... Before I totally forget to bring this up... This movie, me and my friends watched it like circa 91 We're talking about Barfly now. Yes, Barfly. Yes. We watched Barfly. This was in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And two friends of mine who had were from Dartmouth but had moved away for Ottawa for a couple of years. These two kind of clean-cut friends of ours moved away for Ottawa for a couple of years, went to college there and stuff, and came back completely crackpot kind of wannabe writer guys. I'm not going to name names. Well, this essentially is, decent uh, kids, we're, but we're, yeah, we're, we're not going to know. That's that because Pierre Burton got them drunk one That's night. Right. <laughs> but they came <laughs> back with all these kind of drunken artist ambitions. And at the time, we didn't, like I said, not me and the two friends who had already seen Barfly had no idea who Bukowski was. And we showed it to them, oh, watch this movie with us. And they were, and that's how I first learned about it. One of my super cynical wannabe writer friends, who was also a total lush at that point, is like, this is written by Charles Bukowski. I don't think he noticed the opening credits. I said written by it Charles Bukowski. It says that, but I don't think he saw that part. He just clued in right away, like, this is Bukowski. And the next thing Bukowski. I know, and by that point, by that point, I was really into like dubbing movies back then, like the two VCRs. I had a copy of Barfly. Next thing I know, him, the he borrowed it. Know. Next thing I know, or people were always coming over to my house to watch it. Like the popularity of this film spread like wildfire among like really crab. cynical. 20 something guys who I kept meeting through these two friends through college. Like me and two, I was a goofball, and me and my two goofball friends watched the movie, loved it. We showed it to this kind of cracked, eccentric friend of ours. And then the next thing I know, all these cracked, eccentric friends of ours kept renting it or borrowing it, and it became a big cult thing in our neighborhood. Oh. So yeah, it was this a was, this huge was like, deal. This so, you, movie. so you made these videos. To all your friends. Like, no, no, I didn't make them copies. It's like I dubbed. Right. I dubbed. Uh, in fact, my friend may even have just dubbed it on his VCR camera. Remember, but one of us made our own copy. And uh, and then the next thing I know, it was always being loaned out and stuff. And then, and then like, yeah, two of these guys, like, they were dating girls at the time, got them to buy them books. One guy was like, yeah, buy me that book, Women, for Christmas and stuff like yeah, that. I, Did they actually say it like that? Yeah, they were actually. I'm not joking. Hateful. They kind of took that on. Gross hand thing no, they kind of yeah. took on the 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 total like they were talking like Bukowski. There was a lot of pretension. Oh going on yeah, too, yeah. Uh, I, I, I won't deny, man. And, and I'm not gonna lie. One we, guy, we all start kind of talking like this. He was yeah. kind of yeah. cynical. We saw the movie. One of these, they one of the, time. One of the Ottawa crackpot guys is, was cynical enough as it is, but once he saw this movie, it got to the point because he was an aspiring writer it's like if i act obnoxious out in public and like a total pig it'll give me the writing genius of like and i can Kowski. fuck fade on away so, yeah. so, so, like, yeah. so, so, so he yeah. ends up in jail so he, he didn't end up in jail but i would go to bars and sometimes bail on these guys a little early because they were too much even for me i had or, a uh like, was like, hey, I, like mouthing I, I, off to the big macho i did have one i had stuff. one friend at, like because again this is something we would just watch at two in the morning regularly like all the time and I had one friend who actually started trying to live that way, and he wound up moving into a housekeeper room, a housekeeping room down on Kiefer. Um, yeah, this one like, of my friends did that too. He moved into a we used to call it the crazy greenhouse. It was the most depressing the goddamn greenhouse. Like I went to visit him, and he's got the little hot plate, and like. Did he just want some like some sort of authentic? I'm doing air quotes. Authentic experience. I well, guess so. Like, okay, that but was it. but this here's was my, but my here's here's, here's the thing, right? I'll call like, him. Ka. Here's we only the, know him as Ka. in Vancouver. I mean, <laughs> I like, don't know what just happened there. We Ka. stop doing that. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> what are you doing? He's the crack redder. Ka. He lived in the crazy <laughs> greenhouse. What's happening? Right oh, of course. Mac How Rotary, did I not know that? The green, the flop <laughs> green, this flop house by the Micmac Rotary, little typewriter up in his act suite. <laughs> Churning out like what he thought was like the next Bukowski chronicle. I will say, I uh, that that entire long-winded whatever that was was worth it to see you put your hands together for the little typewriter. Yeah. The typewriter, yeah, <laughs> it's he, just he adorable. It's adorable. And, and, yeah, yeah. It was you're like, like Schroeder. It was like you had. Yeah. The, they were suffering for their art, like get Bukowski. Him a anyway, but the thing avoiding is, avoiding the okay. cage with the golden bars as much. But as we possible. all okay. We all again like a bunch of white people from the suburbs of, of Vancouver. Oh. Not in your case. But I didn't whatever, it's, it's like we, we were always like legitimacy. So, you know, we go down to Pigeon Park and we buy like a dime bag of grass. 
and you know whatever it, it was like we, we were like we want to be authentic like like yeah. like like barfly and this guy actually did it and then he like it's very sad he actually became properly homeless drug addicted i won't get into well, it but he's, it, he's full but, on but, but when that method happened, actor when that happened we were like Oh right, this really isn't that glamorous. No, it's not glamorous at all. Now the thing with the thing I love about the film Barfly that we are discussing, it, you listeners who may have forgotten that because we haven't actually talked about it for a few minutes now. Yeah. Um, it this is a romanticized version of of hitting rock bottom. Like I, I would almost compare it to something like Fight Club. Well, I, I don't know if he's hitting rock bottom. He's just uh, he just is rock bottom. He's rock and, bottom, and but, he but, gets. But, the chance to leave that world behind, but doesn't because it'll affect his writing. It's kind of like well, a, he, he it's a big championship of like uh, nonconformity. Yeah, because he, he doesn't like the class disparity and doesn't want to become the uh, Alex Alice Krieg in that world, the, uh, the the Golden Bars lady. He doesn't, he doesn't want that did at all. Did either of you watch? Did either bars. of you watch the uh, the extras on the DVD? I did. Because you didn't? Yeah. I did. I did, yeah. Cause it, I did years ago. Because there's this story about the making of Barfly or whatever, the little movie. That I, did, I didn't rewatch it with the commentary. But I did watch um, the not the movie. commentary, no, but but uh, where it's... Uh, was it Bukowski himself? Who, no, who was... No, he, he's, he's in it. He's in the... Yeah, uh, he's talking about how when Schroeder called him up, he basically told yeah, him to well, fuck yeah, off. Yeah, he hung up on him and told him to fuck off. Which is kind of like in the movie when she keep, they keep trying to give him money. Yeah. And, and so he keeps like hanging up on him, yeah. like, tell him to fuck off. Because, yeah, basically this guy, it was just for a little kick of the old plot synopsis, if you want to call it that, which we've been leaving out pretty much so Well, far. there's not really much of a plot. Is that just that... Yeah, yeah. He's, it's a slice of life. He's totally down and out in his rooming house. And at a bar, and basically, yes, he he submitted years or sometime before the events of the movie. He submitted writing to a magazine. They've decided to publish him, but him because he's so down and out. They have to track him down to just give him. Well, a that's what they, okay. that's why they hired Jack Dance. That's as a right. Jack dick. Dance is a PI they, and they, Alice they, Krieg. They is love the him so much. But then they give him five hundred dollars for his story. See, <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's well, insane. In because though, the way yeah, he's yeah. spending the money, I'm like. Was it five hundred or five thousand? No, it was five hundred bucks. Because he's spending a lot of money. Yeah, but this is in '87 in a scuzzy rundown. I part know, of but town. but still, his could... rooming house was probably fifty bucks. Five hundred dollars was a lot of money to yeah. someone like that in this point point yeah. in time. So, but I, I, every time through the whole movie, I, like I get this. It's almost like he's satirizing his own, the image he's trying to project. Mm-hmm. Like knowing that Bukowski wrote this, and he's like kind of like he's he he's so perfectly flawed that he's flawless you know what i yeah. mean well, like well, there's no legitimate well the, he's not ra- he's not like racist no nope. he doesn't beat up the wrong people well, because he's 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 actually pretty smart and Bukowski was pretty smart as well but he was just an alcoholic who just that was what he did that's where he lived yeah um but uh, can, can we talk about faye dunaway for a little bit of course well okay so we Please, yeah yes. uh, yeah and let, yeah we should absolutely get, um, get on with amazing like i i was i was when i was watching with my wife the other night i was like you know it's impossible to make Faye Dunaway look bad because she's such a beautiful woman, like yeah. just class. And I, th- I don't know if miscast, I don't know, but she's, she did not seem, she, she didn't seem as real as everyone else in this movie. Cause she's, she is so beautiful and living that life, your teeth are going to be terrible. You're going to have terrible skin. She has great legs. He actually says to her, I could, would like to look at a woman's legs for hours. Yeah. You know, cause there's that scene that was, she's laying on the bed. She actually wanted that scene in the movie to, right. to show her legs because she has great legs. She does have great legs. But yeah, like, I, I, I love Faye Dunaway. Don't get me wrong. And I'm glad she was in this. But um, she, she, I think if somebody that like is in that position, she's not ever going to look as good as Faye Dunaway see, looks. Okay, so you, the, now we get back to it because... This is where I think that realism isn't necessarily what 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 Bukowski what or Schroeder were here. going for. Yeah. I think she's I. Well, of course I, I, she's I, gonna I, want I, a, I, well, I, a beautiful I, just, leading just, just, lady. Just before, yeah, yeah, but still, but but just before that, like I I see her as being this beautiful woman in kind of wrinkly, nice clothes. Mm-hmm. Who's got this? You know this 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 suitor who who, who buys all her drinks. Well, she, she, she never, she's a kept woman. Yeah, um, but anyway, I like. She is as much a caricature as Eddie, the the goonish bartender, who you know, or like it, it, the whole thing kind of felt like a painting or something. Like yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't realism. So right. so so when I look at Faye it's Dunaway, like I'm poker. like, of course you get you don't get it's nothing like that. you don't get like no, you, you, not. you don't get a kind you don't get a beautiful woman who's who's someone like Ileana Douglas who's beautiful in an unconventional way. You go with like. 
Well, that's fucking Faye Dunaway, you well, know. Well, like, that's a well, Ilya. Why, why her? Why'd you, why'd you pull her out of your brain? Because I, she is the most unconventionally beautiful woman I can think of. Oh, okay. Like yeah. in, in in movies, I I don't know. She like you well, know what I, I mean? found Faye Dunaway. I don't have any of these objections. No, no, I, no, I, no, I, no, 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 no. I've she, seen she was, women she was, like that in bars where it's like they don't look down and out like they've. So I know it, it's like yeah because she's not nearly as down and out as no, her, 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 she's her apartment. working more regularly. Well, still she she, she doesn't have a job. She's well, a, she, she has she's a kept woman who just drinks all the time. But still, she uh, I think she's uh, yeah I found her totally realistic and I've seen women like that before. Although I have they to, look more together than they although are. Although I have yeah, to, yeah, I have to say I love the 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 bit when she goes, I love corn. Oh, I that, love corn, yeah. and then they go, and then they go to like this for some reason. There's, like a, there's a cornfield in downtown yeah. Los Angeles, in the middle of LA, yeah. and, and then she goes and steals, and the cops start chasing them and the, and because they they've, they've stolen some fucking and they corn. threaten to fire at them too. Well, so and they, it's they, corn. They, ha- they have the gun, they have their yeah. guns out in their hallway. Well, so no, they're looking well, for well the sun was out. Sorry, but yeah, sh- yeah, the part about uh, stopper <laughs> will actually fire. Yeah, and it's obviously they're just they've swiped some corn. How do they even well, know it's if, not there? Well, if, if 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 they were black, they just would have started firing. Yes. Yeah. Um, but but the thing is, I, I find it hilarious. But it that says they, they, a lot about police overreaction. Bro. Yeah. Well, to go all the yeah to chase them all the way into the apartment, and they're like, "Well, just because they stole some a few ears of green corn." And I'm not I know, sure. And I'm you not even sure hear the cops later in the hall like, "I really want to catch them." Like you swear they like again. It's the kid it, this is abs- like it's all it's borderline absurdist. Yeah. It, it, it's it's a, sati- that really it's a satirical in comedic take. Like by or, the way, uh, speaking of but, the but, whole uh, casting and stuff, Sean Penn was Bukowski's first choice. That's right. To play him. Yeah. Because well, they're well, friends in well, real life. Well, we're friends. Well, uh, oh, he would have been great. Well, the, 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 the Sean Penn was the first, but he wanted Dennis Hopper to direct it. And then when Bar- and then uh, Bukowski said no. Uh, he he doesn't. Good. He, Thank he, you, Bukowski. Yeah, he had he had some like he's like a golden boy with a a gold necklace or something like that. That's what they, he called Dennis Hopper. Which wow. uh, I guess then Dennis did. Hopper and Sean Penn ended up making colors together. People forget colors. Dennis Hopper. Colors. That. I'm not the biggest yeah. Dennis Hopper director fan. Yeah, he's fine. Easy Rider. Easy Rider is fucking Easy Rider is anyway. a masterpiece, and yes. Out of the Blue is brilliant. Thank too. you. Yeah, uh, I've never seen that. <laughs> <Vancouver. laughs> that yeah. Our is technician is agree is is agreeing with me and with a single hand salute. Um, Easy the last amazing. movie, but, but is again, again issue, like it, watching the movie r- reminded me of. Now, I've never read any of Bukowski's short stories, but I've read a lot of his poetry, and there is always this, like, almost the fake beauty in in the misery, or, or you know what I mean? Like, the the corn is is it it, it always stands out. Why is there a, a cornfield in? In the middle of LA, is, that, is it a metaphor? Or Maybe something? there is. Well, I don't, there I don't are. Know. There's community gardens down there. Yeah. Okay. And she she, she steals a lot of ears. But of it's corn. like it's like a, a it's like a bit of beauty and a little bit of adventure being chased by the police Ooh, and those like ears are green, again it, baby. It, it, it all yeah. leads in, and she starts crying like nothing ever works out. That's a devastating scene. It's I find so it good. So sad. Well, and then and then I, we the, definitely we cannot do this podcast without mentioning the the, the neighbors. Oh yeah, the, the neighbors, ah, who, the crazy neighbors. Yeah, yeah. Who, who it, it, it sounds like he's beating her all the time. Yeah, constantly. But it's, it's, yeah. A, constantly. it's a twisted role play they're doing. Yeah, he she likes him. it, and then he gets into a fight and winds up stabbing the guy. <laughs> well, kind of, he, he, yeah, kind of. It's kind an, of it's an accident, and there's yeah. the, and there's I don't know. It's like and then they just run away. <laughs> I really love the paramedics who keep keep having to come over. Oh, the dude's always smoking. Like <laughs> when I when they're first introduced, uh, when they they show up, they show up. Um, I thought they were like. They're coming to pick up a body, so I thought they were from the morgue. Yeah, but yeah. they're paramedics, I love and then the dude's smoking. Yeah, I it's love so how funny. they come twice to see Mickey Rourke. Once to see check in on him after Wanda bashes his head. He's got blood purse. pouring down his face. And yeah, he's, he's, the, co- he's covered I'm Leon in blood. Spinks, but the second time is when uh, Wanda thinks she's dying. So right. Mickey Rourke calls the cops again. I, uh, I remember us dying when we saw the film the first time. When the paramedic comes in, he just matter of factly looks at Mickey Rourke and is like. Jesus, don't you change your underwear? And he's like, I think he says something I'm, like, he's, he's sorry. I'm and then sorry. he's like, don't be sorry, just change your underwear. But he doesn't even do it that aggressively. It's like, don't yeah. you ever change your underwear? Yeah. And, then, and then Mick Rourke's like, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry, just change your underwear. It's yeah. like this really perfect well, delivery. Well, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I like also because uh, like uh, Wanda's not dying. Uh, she's she's not. drunk. But she's like, no, she's just drunk. And she's fat. It's yeah. like, she's not fat. <laughs> she's like not fat but at all. But they're just dickhead. Yeah. These dickhead guys. And she thinks she's dying because she sees the reflection. It looks like car windshields. Right. It's like a, drive she an by, angel like the light. Yeah. yeah. And there's also a neon wing outside. Right. Now there's I lo- lots of awesome old school neon in this movie. I, I, I love neon. I, I love yeah. so many. The, the thing, the element of this movie I 
I wouldn't say I dislike it, but what I found least interesting was the uh, the beautiful blonde publisher. Well, like it, I, I like I understand why she's in it, yeah. I, I, but like I, I have to admit, I don't check out, but I'm not as interested whenever well, whenever well, it's just the I, two of them. I, I guess because you know it's a it's an opportunity to lift himself out of a situation if he if he wants to, he can become a famous writer because they like his stuff. He can um, live in her guest house. She offers him yeah. guest house. But uh, well, I'm, a, I'm also absurd. I'm also like they, like the, the day they meet and they go they go uh, when they they drive to apartment and then they're 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 in traffic and there's that couple making out. Yeah, and that just, is yeah. a great. <laughs> it's moment. so it's so hilarious. It's and on just, the Sunset Strip. Yeah, and he just pushes. Yeah, it's on the sun, yeah. just pushes them into traffic. They need a little taste of death. <laughs> and then the guy gets out of his car and and, and then and then Chinaski gets out. And he looks like such a psycho bruiser yeah, right, that the like, guy's just like, fuck this. Yeah, fuck this, I'm out of here. My favorite is what is when she goes into the bank to get his money and, and there's there's the streetwalker like a couple of years oh, behind. Right. She's like, Yeah, honey, or whatever. And then he pulls because he's in a fancy, like nice convertible car, yeah. he reverses and she's like, Fifty bucks I'll suck you till your asshole quivers or something. <laughs> and he just goes Oh, it's not a classy lady when it's C1. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's just like one of those fucking lines where it's... Uh, it, even the devil wouldn't have you. Like, that's one, that's one of his other lines, which I, I think is amazing. It's just like, and again, like, and you don't see a lot of movies where people are allowed to write their own biography yeah. and, and, then, and then be on set, like... I don't know. It seems very European, actually. A very European yeah. approach. It could, could, could have been like a Godard film or something like that. Just a, sort of a, a really? weird slice of life. You know, you're absolutely right. Because I couldn't quite figure out why more American movies aren't like this. And yeah. then, of course, it wasn't directed by an American. Directed by a Frenchman. So it's like, yeah. yeah so it's just kind of a, 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 like, a, a like a lackadaisical sort of drifting through this, this guy's well, life for a couple of days. production note for me, though, is that this is produced by Canon. Who specialized yeah, that in is weird. Death Wish sequels and yeah. a lot of like Masters wonderful of the movies in their own right, like uh, like Masters of the Universe. Well, yeah, they're, over all, the they're, top they're all trashy genre movies. But yeah. it's amazing that this is one of the few art films that got squeezed. Well, I, 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 I like that. Like they go to his apartment, and he's got. I guess he's got such a a charm, like a, a magnetism that they end up sleeping together. Him and Alice Creek. Like, oh, of course, she can't resist yeah, him. Yeah, he he must. Smell he must smell. Oh, I know. His, his balls must smell filthy. like a bag of rotten potatoes. Oh my god! And she just can't keep her hands off him because yeah. he's so real. Yeah, which so by which by the way, she's discovered which, him. And yeah. it's yeah. that, but she is uh, representative. Get hammered in the afternoon. Of, of how we suburban white eighteen year old dudes saw him as well like yeah. the, he, he is a fake romantic figure like the image that he's projecting in this movie it, it's like he's mocking his own readers or something i don't know i, I w watching it this time around is the most thought i've ever put into it because right. I, I used to just put it on and laugh at like okay it's all a degenerate, and i go to bars like this and i smoke and i drink and da 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 and this is really like 20 years later re-watching it i'm i actually started well thinking about it I'd never analyze this movie ever. I just saw it as kind of a comedy. Well, you're, the crackpot, you're, you're, you're uh, an older, an older, an, old, an older gentleman. I'm an older man with whiter hair. Yeah. The, crack, yeah. the crackpot, uh, the crackpot writer friend of mine who got obsessed with this movie and Bukowski even more so because Bukowski. of this movie. Bukowski, aka, oh. aka, God, he um, I still don't know what you're doing God, there. Stop he, doing uh, that. Yeah, years crazy. later, what's happening? Years later, he um, got disillusioned. With Bukowski because he got really Bukowski. into he got really into the writing of Raymond Carver and apparently Carver. there was some situation where Charles Bukowski and it was this was observed by someone else in a book this God, read stop, this guy no name read this guy I knew read this book or read some account apparently did you call him Red because he read a book because <laughs> Bukowski and Raymond Carver appeared together at some literary event and bukowski was Look incredibly condescending match. and put him down i think what it was raymond carver because he was also a professor he oversaw some kind of writer's meeting or something where bukowski showed up and raymond carver and carver was like hosting it and bukowski was really rude and condescending to him but apparently if you really look at their histories raymond carver is far more working class and down to earth in terms of his roots than bukowski ever was mm. and Bukowski was is it, being is it, a dick is, is, to is, him. Is this your opinion? No, this is what this friend of mine said. And he oh, okay. became disillusioned with Bukowski and, and a fanatic of Raymond Carver. Well, Raymond I mean, uh, like... Moved look, on, he did. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the comedian Paul F. Tompkins. But yes. He's great. He's a funny man. I love him. 
Uh, and he wrote an essay long time ago, which actually <laughs> kind of cut me cut me to the quick, sir. Because mm. he was saying basically, if you are over twenty five years old, you should be over Bukowski by that point, right? And so like I, well, and I remember going like, "That's bullshit." I, and then I started thinking about it. And I was like, "Actually, you know what? He's right." And there's nothing wrong with that because, again, it, the facade that he puts up is is very appealing to young people, but doesn't necessarily stand up. Uh, After, but, yeah. but then again, I haven't read his entire. Yeah, body but but, well, but that's the thing. But it's not so much his writing. I think it's just the persona. It's like I remember Matt Goody who used to work here. Used to work here at Black Dog. Put me down one time. He's like, God, it's like guys who still listen to the Doors and Jimi Hendrix, and I do still listen. I still to listen both. to the Doors. I, I don't Jimmy. worship. I hate, I hate the Doors. No, no, I like them, but I have no, no, no I do, belief. I, I do hate the Doors. Yeah, that's good, <laughs> but I have no belief whatsoever in their pers. Well, I mean, not not Hendrix was a genius and stuff, but I mean Jim Morrison specifically. I have no illusions about his whole persona crap. Sure. I just like the Doors as a rock band. I, and I don't boring. consider him a poet. I consider hey, him I, a good rock I, lyricist. I, I, if boring, you yeah. call Jim Morrison a good rock lyricist, then you have to call... Or, sorry, no, you, I, I, no, I would not call him that. No, no, no. Here's the thing. <laughs> sorry, I mixed it up. What I meant to say is I consider him a good rock lyricist, sure. not a poet. And if you want to... Not that I'm too into those labels, but it's like... I always found there was a bit of a snob thing with Jim Morrison. Like, he was above those rock lyricists. Like, he was a poet. But, I mean, then I guess that means Mick Jagger, Burton Cummings, Robert Plant are poets. Cummings. They're rock lyricists. So it's, yeah. like the, so it's like Jim Morrison. He's a good rock lyricist, and that's okay. My, my favorite th I thought elevating him to that higher Gosh, art yeah. stuff I, was total I, snob. For me, for, me, the door pretentious. for me, the Doors is all about Ray Manzarek. But uh, I still like the Doors, but I'm not into their persona. My, my right mother's uh, my mother's partner went and saw the Doors at uh, the at, at, the, the, at the Coliseum back in like I don't know nineteen. Oh, the actual band. Nineteen seventy two or something, and apparently like Morrison made it through about three songs before he like like before got he too drunk dick? and no he passed out and and then and then he what, died seventy. And then he had to. Well, I don't know when it was. He's just telling me this story. Why are you lying to me? Like I'm not a Stop lying to Alex. It's anyway, like you said you saw Charles Bukowski. So last the concert. Week. The point is this: that that, that after Bukowski. X number of songs, the lead singer of the Doors, whose name is Jim Morrison, uh -huh. was too drunk to continue, and they kept the concert going. And poor Ray Manzarek yeah. had it's to like, pl had to play everything and sing the songs, and was and, and was getting solos. booed because he wasn't the guy who was so drunk and shitty. Like, so lame. So and it always lame. bugged me. I'm like, well, why are you worshiping this guy? Because he because he. Anyway, whatever. Let's not. We should continue let's with. Get back, yeah, let's let's uh, let's get back, back and listen to it. And then, then maybe uh, like we should. Uh... Uh, good good uh, reference thing is uh, Charles Bukowski. 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 Uh, his book Hollywood. It's later in his canon. Uh, that's written simultaneously with his writing of the screenplay. Right. So uh, oh, there's a lot. Point. There's a lot of good information in there. A lot of. Good tidbits. So that that so, book is so. Uh, if you're gonna do research on this podcast, read Hollywood by Charles Bukowski. Bukowski. Is, is, is there is there a serial named after him like Count Chocula? Uh, yeah, Bukowski Berry. <laughs> it, it just tastes like, like, like it tastes like beer beer Bukowski soaked crunch. carpet. And he's all he's all drunk. <laughs> also, if you want, you want, you want, you want, to, you want to delve Bukowski back into the origins of this type of writing, uh, George Orwell, keep the aspidistra flying. Oh, it's great! Yeah, I thought George or or Road to Wagon Pier. Hey, are uh, we doing are we doing literary uh, pairings now? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we're just we're trying to flesh it out here. Come on, I, I, I don't think we need to flesh. it I, out. I agree <laughs> with both of you. I love I love keep the Aspidistra flying. I love the Road to Wigan Pier. Uh, down and out in Paris and London. For this for this uh, movie, there, I, there is I movie. would go with Down and Out in Paris and London. Anyway. There is a movie for keep the Aspidistra flying. I believe with Hugh, with yeah with Hugh Grant. The it's, Mary it, oh, War. sorry, Richard E. Grant. It's um, it, unfortunately, it's not very good. The Mary War. Yeah, but it, uh, well, I saw the trailer for that one in England, and it was called "Keep the Aspidistra Flying." Really? Okay. And uh, and then I came back here, and because North Americans are morons, they had to call it a Merry War, which is the dumbest, most yeah. forgettable name for a movie ever. I already forgot what you said. Forget, forget the movie. Read the book. There we go. That's Anyways. usually the case, and it, but unless it's in, unless it's the the works of Charles Bukowski, because in this case, I would say that uh, the work is very well represented. Because you get snippets of when he's writing, you you hear little bits of his poetry. Um, yeah, you know, it's like oh, the the rich, uh, what, which what, what uh, some people never go crazy. What horrible lives they yeah. lead. I love that line. I like. Yeah. I, I I get tired of thinking of things. Uh, I get tired of thinking of things I don't want to do. 
things I things I oh, I can't remember. Yeah, don't want to be. I, I know this. The, quote. the things I don't want to be. Yeah. <laughs> Save the whale is another it's thing. A, that's, that's so hilarious. And I love the bartender. He's like the only friendly bartender in the movie. I forget his name, but he's like Jim. The trick is not to think about it. Yeah. Then we can drink with class. I do love that line, man. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, uh, gonna, I'm gonna ask you the same goddamn question. I ask everyone else. What do you do? I drink. I drink. It's just well, well, there's a, there's a good line actually by the uh, the bartender. It's like, uh, last time I saw you, you had nothing. Now you got a woman in a radio. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> just uh, so. Oh yeah, like, and then uh, and then, so and then ones, someone bets. It, it, like it, like the character Chinaski is so ludicrous. It's it's almost could be played by Tom Hanks in in in, in how much you're supposed to admire this guy. He gets into a f- he he he, 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 he tells Eddie yeah. that his mother's cunt smells like carpet cleaner, yeah. <laughs> and then he jumps over the bar, and then Eddie's like, "I'm taking you inside, brick," and, and goes to the back, and he jumps over the bar, and he just starts drinking pour- out, of the, out of the tap. He's like, bleh, bleh, and he throws a glass on the floor, yeah. and then he goes out, and then he they take bets against Chinaski, and he inexplicably beats the shit well, out of him. It's because he, he ate. Had, he had the fuel. He, he ate. The the fuel. What's the name of that? Sand- and the fuel, What's the book the- you mentioned? Ra- ham and rye. Hollywood. Oh, no. ham and rye is a good... Uh... Because he eats a ham and rye he sandwich. Doesn't. You know, he eats a bit of bologna on some Wonder Bread. Anyway... No, but that guy, not... remember, he steals the guy's sandwich Oh, that's first, right. So well, he like eats a, a crust. Oh, yeah. okay. And that's... That that's made me like This is something I never noticed, because in the beginning of the movie, these these dudes, these two rich guys are hanging out in this shithole Well, they're bar. not rich. Well, they're, 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 they shouldn't be there. It's not a bar they should be in. They, when he grabs a sandwich and starts eating it. Well, and then they send a guy who looks like 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 Mickey Rourke out to get his sandwich. You're never seeing that sandwich. No. And then amazingly, he actually comes back with his But the bartender what, recommended What him, is their so story? Cool. Why are those two guys in suits yeah, sitting in that bar? Yeah, that would be an interesting story. Cause they're, like, they like, should like do a like a Rosencrantz and Gilder. Stein are dead kind of movies Stern. about those two. <laughs> yeah. Na- names are not your forte. <laughs> unless, um, unless it's Will Forte. I would, oh, you, be, oh, you beat me to it yeah. by a second. My Joe Forte. So, so yeah, so, you know, I mean, it, this is this is like a, a projection of Bukowski wants the world to think he is. This was my introduction to Bukowski's writing. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's not very often that, that you get movies like this. Nope. Uh, directed by a, a European... Uh, I written, think, produced I, I, by Canon. Written by written by the subject. I think it. Ha- I think it had to be directed by a European. I don't think like an American director. Maybe like maybe a Mike Nichols or somebody could have done something Dennis like this. Hopper? Or, nah, I, I don't I, know. I don't, I don't think, know. think Dennis Hopper would have done a good job. Maybe. But I, or I maybe it's because because I just love the movie so much. Yeah. Like like I can't imagine anyone else directing it. Yeah, it's hard um, to say. Now, it, so we're gonna wrap this up in a few yeah. minutes. But but are, are there any scenes that we're forgetting? To uh, all my well, friends, the well, oh, of course, well, yeah, you of know, course. and then yeah, then he gets the, he gets paid five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, a whole they track him down because they owe him five hundred dollars and they have it on their conscience that. You, but she just wants to bone him. Well, I mean, the well, whole thing well, is I th- ridiculous. I think, I, think, well, I think also because they wanted him to keep writing for them. Yeah, I think they. I think part of that five hundred dollars was an advance on something he may have done. I don't know. Oh, but it's also it's also ridiculous that I mean. It's, is is Blondie Blondie Richie really so thick that she doesn't look at a guy like that and say, "Oh, I'm sure he'd love to sit and write in my in my furnished <laughs> fucking I, well, mansion." I love when Faye Dunaway refers to her as a West Side bitch. Oh, oh I, I love when she goes to the bar and then Faye Dunaway grabs her by the hair and yanks her off the bar stool and they just start yeah. fighting. Oh my god, it's and amazing. It, it, yeah, that's the, uh, more of the Bukowski <laughs> fantasy. Like oh beautiful women are gonna uh, fight over sh- me in public. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Like that is the moment when I start laugh like, it, but I don't laugh at it. I'm like, this is so. If ever you needed a hint that this is fiction, yes, two gorgeous women fighting, fighting over, over Charles Jeff. fucking Bukowski. Yeah, exactly. That's and that, that'd be like Buddy Hackett or Gilbert Gottfried having having like <laughs> supermodels like fighting yeah, over. Ernest, it's the Ernest, best Ernest, uh, Ernest best uh, bar fight between two female characters since the Girl Scouts in uh, Airplane. I love that how they brawl. Remember right. airplane? Does it turn you scene? on the same way? No, it doesn't okay. turn me on, but it's a very <laughs> colorful, way. almost comic but, scene. And of course, you know, he gets the money and he's just like, he just goes, he just spends his $500. Well, he just, he, he buys three rounds and I, for the whole bar. They're probably each around $40 to $50 a round. He's just like throwing that because he gives, the, he gives the, he gives Frank a tip. Uh, which is like, uh, like, like, an ins- Eddie in, 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 like an insulting fashion. Oh, fr- Frank, uh, Frank changed. Stallone, Eddie, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my God! Oh, and of course, Faye Dunaway has to go off and sleep. 
with but she but she tells that, him like if anyone shows up with a, with a fifth, with a how, fifth how, how much is a fifth of whiskey? How much is that? It's, it's, is it's is a, a whole bottle? It's a, it's a Mickey. Or whatever. It doesn't matter how much. No, it's a Mickey. It doesn't matter what is. It fits in your pocket. It's a Mickey. That's a fifth. It's a, it's, it's it's a Mickey. It, you know when you smuggle your booze into the Rio. Yeah. I mean, uh, 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 sorry, Alex. <laughs> um, it's it's not very much. Um, and also, it's just like it's 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 that whole thing like. It was only mentioned so that she could say that the guy that uh, uh, Chanasky hates the most showed yeah. up with that exact thing. Yeah. Um, which, I, but the thing is, I don't, I, 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 I really I, don't believe that she would have gone home with, yeah, with, well, with, 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 with Frank well, Stallone. He, yeah, he was, he's, he's a good looking guy. He's got the booze, and she said she would do that. Yeah, yeah. but he, but he only, he went, he only went away to a, oh, the job interview scene so he can really show the factory. Oh, and right. again, it's like he's in the job interview. And when you're 18 watching this, you're like, next time I go to a job interview, I'm, I'm just going to look like shit. I'm going to say all the coolest stuff. And then I'll get the job. Like, I don't really remember what he said. Me neither. It was some awful like bucket factory or, or yeah. diarrhea factory or no, whatever. Nobody suffers like the poor. Experience. Well, they're, they ask questions like, for sex, you wrote nothing. And he goes, well, or sex, you wrote none. And he's like, well, none. <laughs> none, none lately. lately. None so lately, yeah. yeah. But anyways, uh, I, I was watching the extras on uh, uh, there's a because a little bit interview with um, Bukowski and he was really impressed with what Mickey Rourke had done with the character that he had given him, and he said uh, he doesn't imitate me, he improved on me, which I thought was pretty good. What are you doing? What's going on? I'm What's fine. happening? He's Dylan's freaking what you, out. Oh, sorry, no, I, it was wasn't you, Alex? It was no, Greg. I know it's oh, not guys just ruined that. I thought I heard the one. Ruined sorry, it. sorry, I, I heard a, I heard a scritchy scratchity, no, and then I looked over and I saw you with your nails, yeah, and it was no, actually it was actually me. Greg. Sorry. Okay, we'll, so we'll just edit. It's one quick edit for the for the podcast. Start start over, Darren. My bad. No, I'll leave it. I like it. I like little moments like that. Well, you, how do you know? You've never listened to a fucking second of this exactly. podcast. So, so, so we you like little moments. You don't know what any of these little moments are. I do. No, you well, don't. I'm in the moment. But, but you don't know what it sounds are you like. Doing so. it, are you doing it again, Greg? Yeah. Are you okay? What is that? It's not on the recording. Did you have like shingles or something? Oh, You're it, scratching your it, shingles? It's because I can hear it and I keep thinking. Right. I just assume it's like. So, like a, there's a mouse eating cheese over there. All right. The top of the mic. I think off. we should round this up. Folks. We, okay. So back to what Darren was saying. Da- Darren, pretend. Uh, Anyways. Time uh, machine. We go back about two minutes. What were you saying? There's a good there's a good little bit at the uh, in the extras of Bukowski talking about Mickey Rourke and how he was impressed with the job that he had done. He he thought he did he's a, he's a better actor than I thought he was going to be and he said he doesn't imitate me, he improved on me. That's that well that's is, true. Yeah. But and there I, are, you improve on him though. I mean everybody <laughs> <laughs> there aren't a lot of people who don't improve on Bukowski. Well, you know, I think it's, we didn't even talk about Mickey Rourke and what, like, I, I think. Sure, like, we did. What well, a fantastic performance. Yeah, it? but well, everyone knows I, I, that. But, 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 like, anyways, like, maybe what happened to Mickey Rourke later on in life is another story. Like, how he looks like a, like a, like an Arby sandwich has been left out in the sun too long now. I don't know. Uh, maybe we could, we could save that for another time. Yeah, well, we yeah. did talk already. We were talking we? about him being a boss. Anyways, so. um,. And like then, I said, I was particularly impressed by his performance because this is when he still had total pretty boy looks. And when I watched this film, I couldn't believe how different he I'm looked. I'm trying to think of it. I mean, I remember he was in Rumblefish, but that's the only ones I can Diner. remember before. Angel Heart, Body Was Angel Heat. Heart yeah. before? It but, may have, well, it was around the same time. All I know is Angel Heart's Diner, amazing. he was a very, like... He was considered a bit of a like hunky leading man. Well, hunky, okay, so hunky boy. okay, so it, uh, with Mark nine and a half weeks with Mark yeah. Hamill and and uh, and Mark Gary Hamill. Busey, you, you you can you can say the movie that they had the motorcycle accident, Return of the Jedi, uh, Predator Two, Empire Strikes Back. What's happening Not now? Return I don't. I, I no, don't, no, I don't, no. It was Return we're of the Jedi. It was definitely Return of no, the Jedi. No, it wasn't. That's why they wrote in that snow creature scarring him. Was the well? Then why does he look so, so much freakier in Return Mark, of the Jedi? Mark Hamill got. Well, the I don't car know, accident. but he he well, looks. I, the big difference in his looks are between Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back, well, and they wrote in him being attacked by that snow creature. I always thought it was Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Well, 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 he was he well. Was older dear Mister Extended Universe, I can't believe I actually <laughs> stumped the Jedi you on a favorite, Star Wars. Uh, here's the, here's some the Jedi Extended is Universe. <laughs> Return of the Jedi is your favorite movie. It is, and I always thought that that he had the motorcycle no, accident. Like it's right before Empire Strikes Back, he looks completely anyway. That's different not my point. Films. My point is that like you got Mark Hamill, you got uh, Gary Busey. 
these are actors and you who got, had, and, you, and you got a hamburger but with, Hill, but with, but with Mickey, Rourke, Mickey Rourke I, like people keep telling me that all this horrible shit happened to his face and I'm just I really don't see any difference between Barfly Mickey Rourke and really? and uh, no. uh, Rumblefish Mickey Rourke and, what, what and, about the, and, the and Double Team well, Mickey look at Rourke Diner. I've never seen Diner. I really like Johnny Handsome. That's an underrated. Johnny don't need no Walter mask. Walter Hill. Walt. Uh, what, what about uh, White Harley Sands? Davis well, hold on. Marble, what, what, I love yeah, that okay. movie. He's totally Guys, Bruce Willis. Answer my question. Movie. What? People keep telling me that he got all ugly, and yeah. I'm like, well, because I, I cannot tell a difference it was between just after Wild Orchid. And when was that? That was that like was in early the nineties. Yeah. Um, okay. But, but but because I look at him. Okay. So. Admittedly, he's been wearing a lot of like. There's the wrestler, and then there's a uh, uh, Sin City, Iron Man too. Actually, sure, it, but, but but in, like in, in Sin City, he had a lot of makeup on. Right, but I don't think he looks. I, in fact, that that god awful Francis Ford Coppola movie I watched last night with uh, Matt Damon, uh, the, Rain, the, the, the Rainmaker, Rain Man. he's in that. Rainmaker. And on, I do. <laughs> people keep acting like he was a burn victim or something, and I'm like, what happened to him? Why are people saying he's so ugly Have you seen later him? in life? Well, not ugly. Just well, yeah, he's kind of well. He was a really handsome dude back then. He looks like a pile of meat now. Kind, looked, yeah, no, I guess. Anyway, but anyways, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. But everyone keeps acting like he had some kind of like like he fell off a motorcycle or something. And I'm just like, I got dragged behind it. So so why are people saying that? You're alone. I just, you're alone in this. Yeah, you are alone. In that. He okay, well, good. well, tell me at like, what point it was he went. From, okay, well, there, well, there, there's a point in his well, career. There's a point in his career. Late nineties. When was when, it? When he when he went back to the boxing, wrestling. right? And it didn't. It, he didn't fare well in his re, this, his second wrestling or uh, uh, boxing career, um, and then he had a lot of dodgy plastic surgery. Okay. And that that he looks he does he looks kind of because I look, remember when he, he reemerged he looks kind of like a like a burn. Victim. I remember him reemerging publicly. There were photos of him in the Globe and Mail either in the late nineties or around two thousand or something. And I didn't recognize him at all. He was at the World Film Festival, I think. I don't think it was the Toronto Film Festival. He was at the World Film Festival. Where's that? Montreal. Montreal it's used called, to be it's the called biggest. the World Film Festival. Yeah, it used to be the biggest festival in Canada. I'm pretty sure that's where it was. It may have been Toronto, but he was unrecognizable. And I don't want to use terms like ugly and stuff like that. I don't mean that at all. All I'm saying Just is. Just he looked completely different. different. People act, definitely not people a act, pretty boy. People, yeah. people act like he had his face ripped off by his pet chimp or something. Yeah. But like honestly, well, I don't know it's, about that. but that, but you know what? That Billy, happens. Look, look at Billy Crystal now. You know what I mean? Like he, people get ugly when they get old. Yeah, but no, but he's he, he's no uglier than any other human being who got old. Well, <laughs> he, we're not calling him ugly. I'm we're not just, even saying yeah. ugly. But you just said he was a burn victim, uh, and and looks like a hamburger. But his hamburger, <laughs> his his. Jesus, his damn. What were you gonna say? Oh, no, never mind. His okay. appearance changed drastically after he returned to boxing. <laughs> all right, it. all right. I just I anyways. Just, uh, the, let's I, just conclude. I'm here. just Come sticking on. up for I'm poor for poor me. Mickey let's, R because I, 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 I love him so I much. Have, I, have, I have a couple more quotes that I, I took from okay. the. From okay, the little, all right. Um, the ma- the majority of Americans are inspired when they're intoxicated, which I thought was an interesting uh, thing. Sure. And, yes. and then the, the, one of the last things he says is like, "Do not trust any of this." Good. Those are the quotes. Yeah, that's why. That's why I, from the little documentary. They Do not it. trust any of this. Yeah. So like, who like that's what Bukowski said about his writing of Barfly. Oh yeah, and that's yeah. I and yeah, it is. A, it is a fiction. It is. It is a, a grandiose mis, almost gleeful misrepresentation of your own legacy. Yeah. Playing out in real time. Well, it's it's it's, it's almost like like a like a like a fantasy version of. Being down and out. Imagine if somebody came to you with, and said, "I want you to make a movie about Alex Chisholm or Darren Gay or Greg Stephenson or, Dylan, or Dylan Ryman or Dylan, well, especially Dylan Ryman. Especially, no, well, just... oh man, it would, it would be it would be just another Die Hard sequel, really, <laughs> with light with lightsabers. <laughs> but um, you know, like this video store, hot chicks would be coming in and oh, throwing yeah. themselves at you. Know exactly. what I mean? Like you'd just be like, "Oh my god, this is, I can't believe that anyone was dumb enough to let me do this." Yeah, and that's what I love about this movie. Okay, so uh, we are moving into final final thoughts. Um, you, so you, we're all gonna get shot after we say these <laughs> things. Uh, so Alex, you were the f- it was your pick. Yeah. So first thing, A does it hold up, and then B, um, it. As we all know, on Mondays here at Black Talk Videos, two for one. If somebody brought uh, Barfly up to the counter, what movie would you recommend? Yeah, would what, be a, what, a good what, what are your what are your twenty seven pairings to go with this uh, this movie? Spaceballs. I'd pair it with Spaceballs. It's highly visible on 
a billboard along the Sunset Strip in the scene. That's true. Oh where God. he drives up to the prostate. And that's totally why. Every time I watch this movie, I think of Spaceballs. Because it, it, I start thinking of Spaceballs right at the moment when I you see I thought you were just saying Spaceballs stop, stop, to piss Darren off. Because I know he hates Spaceballs. it. It's a terrible movie. And uh, that would be my pairing. This film absolutely holds up. There was no question in my mind. See, see you're going like Because I actually own a copy, which we all watched. And I saw this movie... Last time really I watched late. it, I've seen it a million times, but the last time I watched it was during just uh, last year's pandemic, the initial lockdown. I revisited it. I yeah. loved it one. as much as ever. So let me get this straight. The one podcast where you legitimately only have one recommendation. It is fucking it's fucking Spaceballs, Spaceballs because it, it turns up in the background somewhere yes. in this movie. It's on the billboard. <laughs> And the scene where he's talking to the prostitute yeah, just said, before yeah, he ramps yeah. the couple. It's on the billboard. You, you, you are insane. And by the way, am I'm I, going record I think I'm insane. the only person in this building who likes Spaceballs. Yeah. So I, I'm like, yeah, Spaceballs. I would love Spaceballs to watch both those terrible. movies. Um, I didn't say it was I'd good. recommend Spaceballs after this movie. It, so it, Spaceballs it, it, is legitimately your pick? It's like the most Spaceballs overrated Spaceballs comedy of pick. all time. That's, that's uh, okay. Yeah. No, no, it's not the most... Well, we won't it's get. One, it's one of the most overrated comedies of all time. Uh, eh, Anyways, The Hangover. I anyway. wouldn't really say it was. Uh, I wouldn't really say Spaceballs is overrated. It's more because it it didn't do particularly well when it came out. I don't remember it getting many good People reviews. People fucking love it. Ha- it. Well, it has a cult now, but, but it's not funny. Well, some it's, people it's love good. it. I remember. Yeah. A, I think it's funny. A, a wonderful uh, server at the Charlatan. Um, about a year or two ago, did a great reference to it, and no one else laughed except for me. Made she did the "Hello, my baby, you? hello, my darling" dance, uh, and she's like, "It's like that part in Spaceballs," and, and, and did I saw her look all embarrassed. And no and one hurt corrected her because no one laughed. And then right. she walked over to my table and I said, "Great Spaceballs reference." And then she quit. And she was totally. And then uh, you, and then you said, "It's actually from Looney Tunes." <sighs> it's quoted in Spaceballs. The alien, the bop. I know. It, but if she was a dude, you would have been. No, I yeah, wouldn't. Because you want because you were you had a crush no. on her. You, no, not you couldn't at break all. her heart. No, not no no crush here. I, if, was, you've I, she, see, if you've never seen if you've never seen the dancing frog in Looney Tunes, that I know Spaceballs what, scene. I know what it is, but she even said out of her mouth. It's like that scene in what? Spaceballs. She said so. it out of her mouth? Her own that, mouth. That, she didn't say the Looney Tunes that was quoted on Spaceballs. She said it out of her mouth. Oh, interesting. If you had never seen the Looney Tune dancing frog, that Spaceball scene or Alien, that would make no sense. It, it's yeah. funny on its own. I think I, I think I stand alone or sit alone in thinking Spaceballs is actually a very funny Even movie. though that original that? dancing frog skit, when I was a little kid, seeing it on Looney Tunes, it drove me crazy. I thought it was totally like... Like like, like, like so like, bad like, for the like, guy like, like in a good way like did it make you horny or something no no it was totally <laughs> <laughs> okay all right Darren so a does it hold up b yes. if it was Monday well let's just say it, it holds up yeah. we all agree it holds up we loved it everyone here loved it's it it's Monday here at Black Dog Video somebody brings Barfly up to the counter obviously they're willing to pay the fifty dollar deposit because yes. <laughs> they're probably going to steal it we should probably raise that though because it's out of print and it's probably yeah. a lot more than fifty bucks yeah I, th- I think fifty bucks is fair I think fifty dollars uh, what what movie would you would you suggest um, they watch with this one? I have an unchar- unchar- uncharacteristic. I have an odd uh, Are you, stroke <laughs> seizure. I, have a, I actually have to, I have two uh, two pairings. Okay, Take which, three. I, which I never do. Um, the first is uh, John Huston's Fat City. I don't know if you've ever oh, seen yeah, awesome yeah. movie. Yeah, it's a great film. Uh, Richard Dawson's favorite film of all time. Really? The guy yeah. from uh, Family Feud? Family Feud and The Running Man. It was his all-time really? favorite movie. Yeah. Also, how, do you know, how do you know that? He said that on an episode of Family Feud one time. Oh, my God. That's weird. Um, but, yeah, no, it's a, it's a great film about down-and-out people. Uh, they're, one guy's a boxer, and he hooks up with um, Susan Terrell. Uh, S- uh, Stacey Keach hooks up with uh, Susan Terrell, who's like a, a bar fly, and they hang out a lot in bars in the daytime and it's seedy but it's the same kind of uh, aesthetic there's they're still they're sort of happy in their lives um for what what they are and it's it's not, it's not presented as like dour and it's like a tragedy it's just them living uh living their lives and it's a great film it is a great film yeah. you know what building up to the oscars of that year critics were consistently picking because that's an early 70s film we're consistently picking Stacy Keach is best actor over Marlon Brando in The Godfather. Right, we know and what happened. They there. were main roles, and when Stacy Keach wasn't nominated for an Oscar, he wasn't against, even nominated. He wasn't nominated for an Oscar. Uh, it was actually the big. It was a bit of a scandal that year. I know it's it, 
one of those lame kind of like, I can't believe that person's not nominated scandals. Yeah. It was like there was a lot of criticism of the Academy that he wasn't even nominated. And in several critics' polls, he upstaged Brando. Yeah. Well, yeah, he it's was a great. great film. It's a great film. Yeah. Um, uh, but, quite, but, I just want to point out that film, uh, Fat City, by the way, featured on uh, a series we have on YouTube, on the YouTube channel, Black Dog Video Empire, oh, called... Right. Darren's movies I should have seen by now. Yes. Every uh, whenever we can get these things made. Whenever you put it up, we got like nine or ten of these things uh, up there. And uh, yeah, yeah, fat, up there, fat, hopefully not in the cloud. Fat know. City is uh, is is one is, of the picks, one, and, and that's where picks. I first heard of this movie, and it looks great, and I can't wait to watch it. It's amazing. Um, and so I, I just, I, sorry, I, I'd be quick on my second pick. My second pick is a film that came out last year. Um, uh, from Denmark called Another Round. I want to see it so bad. Which is so good. It's about uh, some teachers who decide to maintain a level of alcohol in their system to improve their mm-hmm. lives. And I'm not going to get into uh, how it goes and what happens in it, but it's a great film ab- about alcoholism and well, uh, what alcohol can do or not do for you. Did it not win uh, it the, won, it, the it, Academy it won, Award for it, Best Foreign Film? It, it did. Yeah, and it's great. It's got Mad, Mads Mikkelsen, who everyone loves Mads. I've been I, I'm mad about Mads, and everyone is. So. Uh, uh, yeah. But yeah, either either of those two films would be a, a fine pairing to go along with uh, Barfly. I, it's, I've only ever seen Mads Mikkelsen in like either as Hannibal Lecter or in uh, as, the bad, as the bad guy. Yeah, he's always some outlandish villain well, in, they, in, the Mar- he, in the Marvel, uh, in Doctor Strange. Right. Well, and just, so, so I'd like to see him as a normal oh, person. Yeah, yeah, he's he's amazing. He's such a good actor. There's a great movie called The Hunt, which is again, I think I believe is Danish, yeah, about a, a school teacher who's a, a, accused of a, a crime. Um, was, but was, yeah, was he drunk? No. Oh, okay. No. But yeah, uh, it's it's a great film too. But no, Mads is great. Uh, watch him in anything. Uh, Valhalla Rising. It's, yeah. it, it's been renting. Says the Viking. I love that. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I I almost I keep intending to, to bring it home to watch it. Right, that's a good place. Because Rob do that. and I both want to watch it, but uh, it's always it's always rented. What? The uh, another round. It's oh yeah. It's, well, we have a couple copies. It's, in. it's very it, popular. It's a great I, film. I have to wait for it to die down before I can I can watch. Yeah, it. I loved it. Anyways, what do you have to say about this, Dylan? I'm not sure if it holds up. <laughs> no, obviously it holds up. It's great. I I've been saying to all my friends every time I buy a drink for any of my friends for which, which is rare. The better part I, of 25 I, I've, years. I've never heard you say yeah, that. Yeah, I know. You, you have no well, because you're not so. one of my friends. What? Anyway, you're my podcast mate. Oh, yeah, that's creepy. Um, yeah, obviously it holds up. It's great. I would recommend it to anybody. Um, it's one of my favorite films of all time. I I also have two picks mm, wow. because because I see this movie is 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 kind of having two parts. One is the gritty realism, and the other is the is the uh, outlandish, almost unbelievable romance. Right. And so, if what you're looking for with Barfly is the the gritty mm-hmm. realism, uh, movie directed as far as I know, the only movie directed by Steve Buscemi is called Trees Lounge. He, he's he's directed a he's couple. Directed a few. Like, we have a, Trees we, Lounge is wonderful. Um, Trees, Trees Lounge is great. I would. I don't know if I'd say wonderful. I found it pretty depressing. It is, but that's it's wonderful. But it's it's, it's, it's kind of like the grounded, realistic it's, version. It's not of what Barfly. the film's about. It's how it's about it. That's the one thing I agree that Roger Ebert once said. I don't wow. understand what that means. And Trees Lounge. Is but wonderful. anyway, so uh, Buscemi in in uh, Trees Lounge, he plays basically. Imagine Bukowski without the talent. And right. uh, he's just kind of a horrible person. Doesn't he drive, <laughs> and, uh, doesn't he, doesn't he drive an ice cream truck? He drives truck an ice cream truck. He takes he over from, I, and I can't believe I can't remember his name. It's the actor. It's uh, he, by Michael Penn, isn't no, it? No, or? no, no. God, no, not Michael Penn. That's Sean Penn's pop singer brother. The uh, I can't believe really he was in a lot. Seymour Cassell. He's in a lot of right. classic uh, John Cassavetes. Yeah, films. Um, yeah. And in Rushmore. It's it's and yeah. Trees Lounge. It, it comes from um, I guess. I think the late '90s. Yep, uh, it, it, it was it, no, it was like a, it was a mid early '90s movie. So it's back when that that sort of revolution of indie film. Yeah, movies like movies thing. like Floundering and Living in Oblivion, and you know, like the whole indie thing. Again with Stu Buscemi. And, yeah, mm. and uh, it, but he's in both of them actually. Actually, Squeeze with actually, Michael flou- Keaton. Floundering, I would also recommend if, if my other two picks get Floundering. Um, yeah, the Wedding Singer too. It's it, yes, um, and Armageddon. Just so, anyways, good. and the, and uh, carry uh, on. No, no, you're right though. <sighs> anyway, it is the the non romantic version of uh, of Barfly. Is is kind of how I think of it. Yeah. Is it, it is significantly more down to earth, less poetic, um, but uh, 
but honest portrayal of, of alcoholism in, in shitty pubs in Los Angeles. Right. The other one being, if you want to go for the more romantic thing about, oh. about a writer, uh, Henry and June, I think, would be a, a really good pairing That's for this. That's such a good movie. Which actually was not, reco- it's not even my idea. It was one of our customers, Kim. Ah. Kim was the one who, who said uh, that uh, Henry and June would make a really good pairing. So It's great. I watched it recently, though, and could not see Daniel Day-Lewis as anything other than Ben, uh, ben uh, Stiller. What? Uh, what are you talking so about? Henry, and, Henry June? and June starring Daniel Day, Daniel Day Lewis. Lewis is in it, right? No, no. Or is that no. Long Day's Journey in the Night? What? No, no. This is uh, Fred Ward as Henry Miller. Whoops! And, uh, I'm totally Uma's sorry. I'm totally. I'm thinking of a Long Day's Journey in the Night. Daniel Day Lewis. Is not that? Yeah, he is, and he. It's. You're right. I'm totally but thinking of the wrong movie. They're both by Philip Kaufman. My mistake. But Daniel Day Lewis. In a long day's journey in the night is completely utterly. I'll bet it's great, but we're ben talking Stiller. about what we're talking about. Uh, Henry Hen- and June. Henry and June. Which Fred is- Ward, aka Remo, Remo Williams. Williams. Yes, but, but we haven't talked about Remo Williams at all. On and, the nor, and nor should we. Well, we're talking about it now. So anyway, Remo Williams, um, everybody, which, you know we, which we just got for the shopping. Kenny we'll, Powers' favorite. I movie. guarantee you, we'll be doing it as a podcast in the future. But what Do I was not guarantee anything. What I was saying. Kenny Powers writes his autobiography in. He's bound and down, and he compares himself to Remo Williams. Right. But what I was saying, uh, not about Remo Williams, but rather about the romantic writer, um, fake... I mean, Henry and June Being is... a brawler, it, It's laid. impossible to believe, but it's like the romanticized idea of, of Henry Miller. So if that's what you're looking for from Barfly, then get Henry and June. And if gritty, depressing alcoholism is what you're going for, get Trees Lounge. That brings us to the end of the Black Dog Video After Dark podcast, a.k.a. Black Dog After Dark. AKA. I'm Alex Chisholm, and I just want to <laughs> say as my final... Uh, oh, I thought you were playing me. Well, Black Dog AD. Black Dog AD. I do uh, want to point out, though, before the sun ups, that this is the first time you two you ever you the, outnumbered the, me in terms of up? pairings. It's usually by me one, with multiple pairings by and one. you guys. That's what I was saying. I, could, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe you picked two. space balls. I'm still yeah, like a little right. astonished. Yeah, I know. No, what the <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so you have been... Alex Chisholm. And uh, where can they find you? On Twitter? On Facebook? You can't find me at any the of Rio those theaters. places. You can Sleeping find in me park. in person at Black Dog Video or the Rio Theater. And you are Darren Gay. Yes. Um, yeah, he owns the place. Yeah, uh, I'm I, always here. I have been Dylan Reimer. Thank you for listening. A, a, a big special thank you to Greg. Our, putting up uh, with our situation in this very hot, hot, uh, hot. I'm so hot. Is, I'm taking on my pants right now. It is ri- zip. Uh, no, you don't. You, you, no, you're getting up there. You don't even have that. You just have an elastic keeping yeah. your pants up. <laughs> anyway, old. we ha- we recorded this in a video store in called a hot Black Dog Video. Sweaty video store at one four seven zero Commercial Drive. In uh, hot and sweaty Vancouver. <laughs> Vancouver. Mercifully not smoky, though. No. Nope, Touch wood. Uh, you can find everything you need to know at www.blackdogvideo.ca. Um, and yeah, yeah check, out our, uh, check out some of Darren's videos on our YouTube channel, Black yeah, Dog Video fun. Empire. Yeah, get, 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 some, uh, get some ideas on what to watch. Yeah. Um, I can't think of anything else to say. Thank you all for listening. Everybody be good to each other. and uh, Get fair- vaccinated. Yeah, get actually fuck yeah, get vaccinated. Get those jabs. Jabberwocky. <laughs> oh, oh, let's end it there. Let's end That's, it there. Yeah, all right. Okay, thanks everyone. Good night. Bye. The Black Dog After Dark podcast is recorded at Black Dog Video on Commercial Drive in Vancouver, Canada. It's presented by Alex Chisholm, Darren Gay, and Dylan Reimer. It is produced by Dylan Reimer and Darren Gay. Alex just kind of stands there and drinks beer. The intro and outro music was recorded by Tiger Burning Bright, composed by Jeff, who works at Jefferson's Barbershop, also on Commercial Drive. Hello, my friend! Keep, your, keep the change, pour yourself a drink, go buy yourself some bubblegum. Yeah.